You got to do jazz hands. Come on, everyone. Jazz hands. Stop. Let's see the jazz hands. We're there you live. Go. <laughs> we're, we're live from the Big Daddy Gun Studios. I Big hope Daddy. you got your big girl panties on because tonight we're doing double duty. This is the second time I'm going live. Got a bunch of people still hanging out with me from the previous show. We were just talking about the NRA. Etu Brute. Etu Brute. The NRA is uh, giving ground, giving ground, doing uh, oh, due God. to the. Uh, Don't even, I mean, I got me. It's, it got me upset, actually. Yeah, I'm. I'm still upset. I was upset. I'm still upset. Uh, my I, my know, buddy you know, Mark and Babyface were trying to talk me down, but I'm still mad. Yeah, you know, I feel. You know what I feel like? I feel like the day after Bill Clinton got elected. Oh boy. <laughs> yeah. That's going way back. That's going into the. Yeah, that's that's when I did my life membership. My life membership with the NRA back then. But. Yeah. Well, you know, like Babyface is trying to tell me that you know this is just a strategy from the NRA, et cetera, et cetera. It I don't know, be. man. I'm not. I'm not 100. percent So it, I think if it's a strategy, it's a stupid strategy. It's. It could be a little bit. I thought about that too. Um, but, but you never. You never want to give those nut jobs a, a inch. And absolutely not you and i have had this argument um because mark was talking about it how we're always having this argument you and i had this argument with him but you know the the subject of today's show is this dude right here big yeah, stomp there you go stomp hey, hey. customs hey hey nice to meet you guys he's hey. live on the air with us um stomp represents uh how many how many um i got knife i got about, makers i got about 25 knife makers now i'm representing and uh, what I'm trying to do is uh, just a different concept on the game and uh, bring some real customer service to, to uh, knife buyers that actually uh, want to get things made for them. You know what I mean? So I have uh, pretty big hands and like, uh, you know, uh, my rings are like size 16s and shit, you know, and uh, I, I've never got a knife that could, you know, fit my hand, you know. So I bought I bought like several and, I, and by the time I was done with it, I was like having them made for me by guys. And then they were making a couple of my designs, and I, I was like, you know, I'm going to do something different. Yeah, and I no, just no. I started acquiring knowledge of makers and who I liked, and you know, over like two years of buying on my own. And then I started bringing guys in, and none of these guys necessarily want to deal with the sales, uh, or, or they want to be artists. You know, what I mean, they want to make these things yeah. and sell them. So, so yeah. I bring I bring the knives for the same price they would normally sell them. I get a little bit of a percentage. Uh, when it comes through my site, but everyone buys for the same price they would normally buy. At okay. Stomping you customs. Right. So we're gonna get real in depth into stomping you customs. Um, is the website up already? No, we got about a we got about a month for the makers to load all their websites. When you go there, each maker is gonna have his own store, his own inventory, all the knives that that are available, all the knives that he can make to order. And we're hoping that uh, I even have makers that will do custom orders. Uh, for what you want, if you draw pictures, they get a hold of you and have a consultation. And um, oh. a lot, a lot of contact with the makers is necessary to make these transactions where people are happy. And I'm, I'm the, I'm the middle dude uh, making that happen and and uh, uh, making sure that everyone, everyone's happy, including the makers. These guys are artists that no one appreciates. All my guys that have sec are, are, are side job makers. You know, there's a few full times. Full timers that went from teaching and making to making, like Melvin Lozado out of Tampa, Tampa Knives out of Lozado. He's an ex-teacher, a special special uh, uh, needs teacher like myself, and uh, he uh, he went to making knives full time, and he he makes just unbelievable overbuilt flippers. Let me uh, show you one right here. I mean, this knife is just insane. Oh, that is cool. That's a nice little time to hold on, lock it on. So, I mean, the the um, the big one of the big goals that I have for this show, for this platform here, is that we can help to promote folks out there. So we're gonna like we're gonna fully dig into this and talk about stomping you. I think if you guys want to support him right now, you can definitely go to his Facebook. We did include the link to the Stomping You Customs Facebook in the description of this. Thank you. So, oh, you're absolutely. I'm also on Instagram. It's a real big deal to uh, to uh, talk to new people, and, and that's what this is all about: is uh, getting people into uh, customs and answering questions. Okay, what's very your, cool. What's your Instagram? How do you yeah. how do you go by an Instagram? Stomping you customs is my Instagram. My uh, regular personal Insta my personal Facebook. I send uh, positive messages on is uh, Stomp with a capital N U for the last name, and you'll see me there too. Okay. Cool. Okay, so very cool. So we're gonna check. We're gonna check all of that out. Um, 
One of the things I want to do here, I just want to take a quick break so that we can get some business stuff done here. We are going to, of course, talk to Stop and You Customs. We're also going to talk about the NRA, any other gun stuff that's going on. I'm not even like, I saw the NRA thing and lost my shit, as I'm sure a lot, a lot of you guys did. So I want to thank everyone that's here in the chat right now. Lots of folks came over from the other chat that we did. Um, Lucky43113 was number one. He was number one in the chat, and he was like, I'm done with the NRA. We've also got Chris B. We've got, uh, let me see who else is in here, uh, Joe Nutson. Got Joe in here. We have, uh, I see Walter Mark Wagner, the Archangel. He's also mad. DC2 Mega Boost, Chris Bullis, Murphy Just, Greg 98K. Uh, Vanessa Kitty. So we've got a bunch of people. Me too on uh, Me too on Tube. Shut up and play your guitar. So you know anyone that I miss, just give uh, will give me a roll call and I will definitely shout you out here at the top of the show. I want to thank everyone that supports us on Patreon. Big shout out to the Patreon supporters. We are Patreon slash Hank Strange. Um, we would not be able to keep doing this without you guys. Without your continued support. I mean, every time we put up a video, YouTube automatically demonetizes the hell out of that thing. And then we have to, like, put in to try to get it to come back on and all that. I could go into that stuff. As a matter of fact, in a connection to the NRA, we've been um, through an intermediary trying to, like, talk to the NRA to go, to go up there and talk to YouTube about what's going on. And I'll be honest with you guys, I really don't have a lot of faith in that, especially in light of um, other things that are going on. So what's yeah, up? Well, to... I, I, Go ahead. Go I ahead, think Walter. they're scared. I think they'll scared they'll get thrown off too. Um, I don't know. Uh, what do you mean? Who will get thrown off? The, NRA uh, will get thrown off. The NRA gets the. They get a free reign, pretty much. Well, that's because they're they're they are they're in a protected class, right? You know, when I've spoken to lawyers about this whole thing going on, as gun guys, we're not in a protected class. You know, they're probably worried that the NRA will bring suit against them. For um, you know, freedom of speech, etc. If they try to shut the NRA down, but they're effectively going after us, you know. So okay. we'll see. Obviously, yes, the NRA is there. I think um, also the USCCA is there. They're allowed to advertise and all that kind of yeah, stuff. Yeah. Uh, let me give a shout out to Rod Mills. He's in the house. Kofi Bates, Highway Run seventy seven, Kenneth Semedi. I think. Uh, hopefully, I said it right. So there you go. What's up to those guys? Um, right. I have to ask again. Stomping you customs? Stomping new customs. Stomping, stomping you. new customs. Stomping, stomping you. It all started right here when I was about four. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I used oh, to play with these things it. called stompers. Stomping oh, I see. new. These little, these little things used to take batteries and just run all over the place. So when I was 19, I bought a car or a truck, a uh, 76 Dodge, and put some big fat tires on it and called it stomping you. And the same year I became a bouncer and it just kind of stuck. And I was a bouncer <laughs> for 13 years before uh, teaching. Yeah. I think that name alone will get you the jobs as a, as a bouncer. Like, yeah, what's yeah your, no lawsuits, you know? 13 years. I'm a real nice guy actually. Yeah. A lot of, um, a lot of, uh, a lot of bouncers are actually nice guys. So yeah, yeah it's go ahead. It, it, it's really about uh, the excitement level. I mean, you're just in, um, it's just exciting. I, same reason I bet you cops are cops and firemen are firemen. Uh, shout out to uh, Ken Merrickin and the guys at Safety Harbor Fire. They're right there in the group. Uh, hello to those guys. We got firemen oh. watching. We got some Safety Harbor firefighters in the group. Yeah. What's Ken, up, yo? Ken <laughs> Merrickin in the house. Ken What's Merrickin up to the firefighters in Safety Harbor? Yeah. One, of them's, one of them's a maker of mine, Ken Merrickin. Awesome. Oh, very cool. Oh, Safety unbelievable. Harbor's finest. Unbelievable maker. Very <laughs> new. Cool. Very new. I drove a hour and a half to meet him, and it was one of the best days of my life. Yeah. So for anyone who wants to know, um, the Instagram is S-T-O-M-P-N-U, customs. Oh, it's underscore. Yeah. There's an underscore in the middle. So stomping you or S-T-O-M-P-N-U, underscore, customs that's how you get i'm i'm following on instagram so i encourage everyone else to go follow on instagram facebook etc all that good stuff get in uh, there show some support you know thank you guys um, thank you very no, much i no really wonder appreciate I couldn't, it no wonder i couldn't find it i was spelling it correctly <laughs> <laughs> no walter i'm, I'm, I'm spell old school stuff correctly i'm not i'm not that much on spelling yeah you know, one thing when i was in school i wasn't a big math person but i did figure out once i 
I, I could spell anything, so it's like, yeah. Yeah. Oh, good, between me and you, we can get something done, I bet. <laughs> yeah. So that's cool to know. That's cool to know that we've got some firefighters out there. You know, a lot of these guys get into – uh, making things as something, not only something to do to keep them busy, keep, you know, idle hands and all that. Extra but, income source. Yeah, extra income, you know, um, to help fund their retirement, et cetera. You know, it's not exactly like a lucrative retirement for everyone out there. So, yeah. you know, the we, truth we is, believe in, in, in taking care of makers. What's up? The, the truth is these guys are very much artists. They start out with uh, buying uh, massive amounts of equipment that take uh, five, six years to pay off. And, um, the, the the knives the knives are uh, what people would think is expensive, but I have uh, uh, I have several uh, bought knives for the same price. I mean, I have knives down to thirty five bucks from fourteen year old makers named Wyatt Breeze. You oh, know, cool. just really that's a cool. nice knife. Yeah, cool. just really cool butt caps with guards, and you know, these guys are learning and they're in different phases. I sell this right. as a cheese knife for thirty five bucks. You know what I mean? So yeah. uh, a guy like, uh, you know, Melvin Lozada, ta Knives of Tampa, you know, this is an $800 steal. I this like is that. a massive, massive overbuilt folder. Titanium, every bit of it is sick. You know, when, cool. when I show you my Kurt American knives, when I get them back, it, it, it's just I, I have an unbelievable amount of uh, makers. Uh, Ricky Idlet, just, uh, just an amazing amount of guys. Yeah, uh, Anchor Forge is another uh, kid. I started buying knives from him when he's 17, and he won't even let me sell them. He's so good now, and he knows where he's going. Is straight to the top. I can. Sh I'm going to show you a few of his too. Just okay, ama cool. Amazing stuff. Cool. So shout out to Shaman Bill, DC2 Mega Boost, Tango Hunter. Lots of cool folks in the building already with us. Um, let me remind everyone, click the thumbs up button of this video. Oh, yeah. Click that thumbs up button. Make sure you share this video on your social media and all that kind of good stuff. That's what helps get this party really started. That lights the fire here. Yeah. Get, gets everyone watching. If you're not subscribed to the Hank Strange situation, what are you doing? Yeah, you I'm need good. to make sure you're subscribed. <laughs> get on with it. Yeah. Get on it. Get on it. So, you know, yes, we're definitely going to go through knives and stuff like that here. We are, I was just on live, like, I don't know, it looks like, I think I was on live about an hour ago for about half an hour, 40 minutes or something like that. We were talking about the news from the NRA. So before we get into that stop, let me just, let me just go to this NRA news uh, real quick for folks who are joining us now. Yes, sir. Uh, on the regular thing and they don't know what, what's going on. This is from The Hill and it's the... Um, the headline is NRA gives ground on bump stocks. Mm -hmm. So the, uh, the thing here is National Rifle Association on Thursday broke its silence on the deadliest mass shooting in U.S. history, calling for additional regulations on bump stocks, which allow semi-automatic guns to fire hundreds of rounds per minute. So, you know, we can go on to their thing. Obviously, that's from the media. They have their own spin that they put on everything. Right, right, right. There's another one from the Washington Post. Um, NRA says it backs regulations on bump, on bump stocks. Top House Republicans open to legislation. Lola was just playing me um, some audio from Paul Ryan, who is open to looking at all this stuff. He doesn't know what the hell a bump stock is, never heard of it. You've got a bunch of other guys that never heard of it. And let me, uh, Walter, I know you're chomping at the bit, but I want to do no, this no. because because uh, uh, Babyface, Patrick, wanted to make sure that I uh, reiterated this for people. There is a statement from the NRA ILA. So Wayne Pierre and Chris Cox put issued a joint statement. And I think what's better than going into the headlines, because the media is going to spin this in their own way. But this right. is what I think is dangerous about the NRA just putting this stuff out and then letting the media spin it however they want to. So, um, so this is from uh, Chris Cox and um, Wayne LaPierre. And it's on the NRA ILA. In the aftermath of the evil and senseless attack in Las Vegas, the American people are looking for answers as to how to um, as to how future tragedies can be prevented. Unfortunately, the first response from some politicians has been to call for more gun control, banning guns from law-abiding Americans based on the criminal act of a madman will do nothing to prevent future attacks. Um, this is a fact that has been proven time and time again in countries across the world. In Las Vegas, reports indicate that certain devices were used to modify the firearms involved. Despite the fact that the Obama administration approved 
the sale of bump fire stocks on at least two occasions. The National Rifle Association is calling on the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms, and Explosive, uh, Explosives, B-A-T-F-E, to immediately review whether these devices comply with federal law. The NRA well, believes... They, they already did that. I know. Um, the NRA believes that devices designed to allow semi-automatic rifles to function like fully automatic rifles should be subject to additional regulations. In an increasingly dangerous world, the NRA remains focused on our mission, strengthening American Second Amendment freedoms to defend themselves, their families, and their communities. To that end, on behalf of our 5 million members across the country, we urge Congress to pass National Right to Carry Reciprocity, which will allow law-abiding Americans to defend themselves and their families from acts of violence. So that's it. I wanted to read that in full before we all get into it. To like, you know, people are going to say we're not being fair to the NRA, which is jumping on them and attacking them. You know, that's the full statement of what they said. You guys could go look that up. Um, Walter, what did you want to say? No, I would, nah, we'll save it for another time. No, you could say it. They're playing politics just like Hillary Clinton plays politics. Yeah, they're, they're, saying, they're, they're saying they're all about the Second Amendment, and now let's push for reciprocity. Well, yeah, you just jump. Let's talk about what you, what we're talking about. Not go to reciprocity. That didn't have anything to do with what's going on today. Let's you talk know. about why the NRA gets uh, so many million members. I mean, that's all people that uh, enjoy their right and uh, want yeah. to uh, have that right backed up by somebody, really? and they want someone to talk for us, and they're obviously not talking right now. Right. Do you really think anybody's going to listen to them about reciprocity after they give to Evan on this uh, on this bump fire thing? No, I don't. Um, have you guys ever used bump fire stomp? Yeah, I've, I've played with one one time. It's it's a, it's, it's kind of a pos, my opinion. But um, it's gimmicky. It's gimmicky. Basically, yeah, yeah. basically the way that it works is you pull. It's a it's a stock, and and um, I believe I'm familiar. Other. Yeah. It's so just, you know, just, you pull the trigger and then like kind of push it forward, and it just uh, the recoil the combination yeah, of the recoil of and your fingers fires, yeah. and the trigger. Yeah. I right. mean. You pull it back to a locked position. It's one of the gimmicker ones. There's a much better out now, much better versions. I mean, are they going to yeah. just ban this one? There's, well, there's no, many, that... many, many versions of this out. You know what I, I mean? guarantee yeah. you that if that's we allow any work. kind of – first of all, the, the ATF has looked at this several times, as they said. Right. The Obama administration proof. allowed this thing. If the Obama administration allowed this yeah. and they didn't get in there and research what this is and, you know, and, and there's definitely people like us – who are out there. We know what it is. There's YouTube videos. Um, you know, they NBC has been using video from um, Hickok 45 and some other news places have been using video from uh, Military Arms Channel. If they're just deciding to look into this now, well, I don't know what to tell you. They should have gotten rid of rid of people at the ATF a long time ago. The ATF approved it. It's not fully automatic fire. No, nope. it meets You're, all their requirements. Yes. Imagine what would have happened if they had that glove. Yeah, well, okay, that's yeah, that's a whole other thing. So the ATF did not allow that glove. They didn't allow that glove, but they allowed this and they allowed other things. And the thing about it is, is that um, these, the, the the physical things, the mechanical devices, the pieces of metal, don't hurt people. Human beings hurt hurt other human beings, right? Yeah, this is a mental health issue being disguised as a gun issue. Uh, clearly. Yeah, yeah, and the the thing is, is that if you you know, if you if you give an inch to these guys and they get in there, they're not just going to go after uh, bump fire stocks. They're going to go after triggers. They're going to go after other accessories. High capacity go, magazines again. Yeah. The whole nine yards. Yeah. Right. Other things that go on guns. And none of that's going to make any difference. First of all, there's tons of stuff out there. Second of all, people can make these things, whether it's legal or illegal. Right, right. You don't you need know. to have a bump fire. I, I... You don't need to have that stock to do what he did, period. Absolutely not. And there's lots yeah. of ways to create destruction. And on top of that, on top of that, obviously, I don't want to, like, relitigate the whole thing I did. You guys can go see what I had to say about it. Yeah, we'll yeah. be talking about this for probably years to come at this point. But the other thing about it is a lot of these guys, the, the, the liberals, the Dems on their side, you know, people like Jimmy Kimmel, these are guys that support abortion. You know, yeah, they kill hundreds of kids a day. Yeah, thousands, not hundreds. It's it's over. It's somewhere in the you know somewhere in the in the thousand mark. And right? it's actually pointed primarily toward 
the minority people of, people of color, etc. You know, right. but they believe that hey, that's a people, that's a money thing. Yeah, they believe people have freedom of, of choice. There, uh, uh, check out this T-shirt I'm wearing today. Can you guys see what that says? I'm pro choice. Pro choice. I'm pro choice, but when it comes to these guns right here, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I'm pro choice like when that's... it comes to buns to guns, baby. Buns. I'm pro choice when it comes to yeah, buns too. I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm pro choice when it comes to buns also. But this is a shirt that we have. You know, uh, shameless plug. We have this shirt on Forge from Freedom. This is in the Hank Strange collection. Nice. Uh, I did. I didn't design it. It, it. it was one of the shirts that they had in there. And I was like, oh, this oh, is cool. Wait a minute. What Put it in my stomp, collection. Helping you. What's the? Let's see your shirt there. Without uh, you having this, to take this is, this is this is one of mine. Stomping you customs. Oh, that's cool. Joy. That's nice. Always like skulls and crossbones. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, huh, this is yeah. uh, this is sort of remnants of my forehead here. I got dented in a few times. Uh, <laughs> yeah, whatever, uh, I don't real, know if it's your forehead, but okay. <laughs> yeah, you know, uh, it was actually uh, it was at work. The clipboard uh, just crashed it in here. I got a ding in here. Not not bouncing. It was, uh, the other job. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah I, um, work with, I, Stop, I work Stop with has lived a pretty colorful life, I'm sure. Um, yeah, a little, little, little bit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so to uh, yeah, to what I was saying, you know, um, honestly, but, man, I think this is crazy. I don't believe that the I, NRA I, is just going this route, thinking that these guys are going to go, oh, you know what? If you take that thing, if you take the bumps, the bump fire stocks off of the, you know, we make those illegal, then we're going to let you guys, we're going to give you guys reciprocity. Well, I mean, this, give you I, 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 I off the NFA. At this point, they can't make them illegal. Because there's tens of thousands. There's probably 150, 200,000 of those things out there. They can make them illegal. They can do anything they want. They can but... make them illegal, and they could try to force people to return them. Or they can start going and visiting people and making people destroy them. All that. How are they going to find there? out who bought a bump fire stock at Big Daddy Guns with a cash? Well, yes. Yeah. They, I they ain't going to find it. <laughs> I agree with you on that, but most people, we're living in a modern world, and yes, I know folks who only buy who only buy stuff in cash. Oh, I know lots of people who buy stuff with cash. Yeah, so. you know, and that, I'm not saying that's a good practice. That's why they go to Knob Creek, my friend. Exactly. But here's the thing. What about the people who did it? What about the people who ordered it online? What about, about the people that went into the store and paid They're not for it with a credit card? Sorry. They're not going to collect them up. Okay. I, I you know, I understand they'll only what you They'll only get a fraction of what... Trust me, they only get a fraction. Yeah, Vanessa Kitty. <laughs> well, they, they don't have, they don't how, have the how physical. Are you go, how, how are you going to go about collecting these things, anyways? Yeah, they don't have the physical. You're, you're, they don't have the physical local, manpower local law, to do it. Local you, law you enforcement is not, not going to want to be going and knocking on houses. No, all, no, no, all they no. have to do is what the government likes to do: just create a unit, get a bunch <laughs> of they don't have the Physical manpower. Yeah, they're, just they're start all... hiring people. There's people who will do it. There's people chopping well, at the bit could... to go take guns away from maybe people. Maybe we could use the TSA Nazis to do it. Huh? Okay. Yeah, that's yeah, what that's what I'm trying to say. That's an efficient outfit. There, that's for sure. They get a lot done. Yeah, dude, you it's know, just gonna, it's... they won't put some dudes together. Don't think there's people out uh, there. Who, it's not going to get. There's hypocrites get out there that. that will use guns to take guns away from people. Trust me. They're not going <laughs> to do it to take a bump fire stock away. Trust me. Yeah, I don't think there's no way in hell. This is my thing. I don't think there's any way in hell that liberals, Democrats have been have been waiting to get an opportunity to get some gun control in, and if yeah, Republicans yeah. decide to let this bill go up. They're gonna they're gonna jam so much shit up in there. It's you're gonna you're gonna think that you're a Richard Gear man when you when you find out what starts coming out your butthole. Okay, so I, there's I, I think this is really dangerous. A well, really I mean, bad idea. like Reed Hendricks' video the other night was real poignant on this. I mean, give an inch, that's it. Yeah. You know what I mean? What you can't, I mean, you can't be reasonable with an unreasonable person. There's, there's there's more to this than just uh, you know your right to you know bear arms. I mean, this is about uh, people coming over from England that were tired of being uh, trampled on by their uh, by their uh, powers of be, and and they said, hey, we need to be able to take care of this if something happens. Right. I mean, the the idea of of the right to bear arms has nothing isn't as much as as about the one thing of having the gun in my house or not having the gun in the house. The idea of the right to bear arms is to be able to say the government should, should not be able to oppress us. Uh, uh, we all have guns, you know. Japanese J Japan didn't invade us for a reason. So uh, they knew everybody had a gun. Mainland. Yeah, there's no way you would do this. You know what I mean? This is not a smart move. Yeah. I mean, what I are mean, they? Well, here's the thing. So Patrick and um, and you know, I mean, they're my friends. Patrick and Mark were saying that we have to be reasonable. 
we have to like signal that we're willing to negotiate. Why, why do we have to be reasonable? We, King Osabi, didn't do that. Did we? Well, yeah, this is how many we, guns are. We, we didn't do that but we, in Las Vegas. So why do we? I don't to, think I, I'm not in the camp of us being reasonable. I think it's bullshit. I know. I'm, I mean, I'm, it, I'm with a, Reed on this. I'm with you guys. They're not being thought. reasonable. You can't be reasonable with insane people. With unreasonable people. These people, yeah, these people are batshit crazy. There's yeah, well, that's the problem. Well, you have a, it's a mental health issue. Obviously, it's clearly. Oh yeah, clearly yeah I agree, I agree with you there. Yeah, Th yeah. These people well, think you know, that it's okay to commit genocide on little babies before yeah. they're even born because they're like, After, hey, they if they're inside the womb, if they're inside the womb, that's not life. They, that's they bullshit. Make it, they want to make it legal after. Okay, so why can't we say if if that if that's how these crazy ass people look at things? So I personally and think then it's sell the body parts. How about I think, that? I think it's terrible that the people in Vegas died and they died for, oh, yeah, for yeah. absolutely no reason. But they're they dead. They they're dead. Die. They didn't die for this. Yeah, but they're dead. They're right. dead. These same people, for what they believe, like you know, want to take away our liberties based on people who are no longer here, and they're totally willing to kill people who could potentially be here. So that's that's bullshit. I, listen, I don't think listen, you, can, you can, you know. Go ahead. There's there's laws already for uh, things that are illegal that you do to people. Um, I mean, if you shoot somebody, you're going to go down uh, for murder if that's what you just did. You know what I mean? Yeah, what this guy did was if, totally, totally if, fucking if it's not, That's what I'm saying. If it's not justified, uh, uh, this is uh, not something that's legal anyways. There, there are laws that are uh, not are, are, are binded because of uh, decisions judges can't make on drugs and all kinds of things. You know yeah. what I mean? Also, so, an another thing I would say when people are trying to get you to negotiate with people, you know what? Let those guys tell us what they're going to give us first. They're not going to give us you. anything. Not I, but, but, let, not, but let them say what they're willing to give us. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Ask them, if you're going to negotiate with someone, you should say, what are you, what are you guys willing? The NRA, the NRA didn't ask us. This is the thing that bothers me here. It's just like when they pushed Trump. The NRA didn't ask anyone. They just decided, yeah, we're going to push Trump. Trump's going to be pro-gun. He's going to well, defend all your rights. No, no other choice. And they push Trump. Okay, fine. I get that. But, you know, <laughs> they didn't ask us about this either. We give them money. They mentioned the 5 million people that give them money. That's us. We're the, I'm the right, 5 right. million people. I'm an NRA member. I give them my money. You give them your money, right? You're, you're a gonna, lifetime, you're you're a gonna, lifetime you're gonna, member. Yeah, you're going to go to the NRA convention now? I don't know, man. If uh, I mean, I'm not, I'm not other, saying always, I'm, I'm not always, saying no right now, but I'm telling you right, 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 that the right. next few, the next few days, the next few weeks, the next few months, if I see that these guys are out there willing to like give up everything, wh whatever you negotiate in public with like this, <laughs> you've given them an inch in public. You've given them a yard. Why do you have? Once again, like I said, why do you have to give them anything? Yeah. So I didn't do that. You didn't do that. Nobody here did that. So I, why do I let me tell you something. If the NRA, if the if uh, Democrats come out and go, you know what? If you guys say that, uh, if you guys all agree that bumps that bump uh, fires should be um, illegal, and we'll we'll put that on a special thing where you have to get uh, special permission to have it, we'll give you guys reciprocity, fifty states. No, if they come out and that. say that, then things will be different. <laughs> But that's not I, I, I can guarantee you right now my psychic powers are telling me that Nancy Pelosi is not fucking agreeing to that bullshit. Well, there's well, no like way said, in hell she's going to agree to suppressors coming off the NFA. She already just said that if this guy had a suppressor, he would have done way more damage. Well, I mean, if in one hand a big pile of shit and the other, he didn't. OK, so that's not even an issue. Yeah. <laughs> he, so he didn't have a, one. So there's laws that take care of what he did in any other situation right, right yeah right. So, I, I mean what what if he walked into the crowd and did this to three people you're not going to hear about it you, you know what i mean it doesn't mean i'm crazy because i have this you know what i'm saying or you have it, a, it, or you have a whole wall with them well yeah, yeah you, you know what make, i mean then that's another that's another angle they're pushing too is oh you've got lots of guns you're a nut oh. Yeah, but don't think it that's was, ridiculous. It, it, Listen, this, there's there's 300 million guns in the United States. If there was a gun problem, there wouldn't be anyone talking about it. Yeah, <laughs> if we were, if if even even if like 10 percent of us were like this guy, we it's would be, we would be an all out apocalyptic chaotic dude. We win know, end of days war. No, I'm saying like this guy's crazy. We're not. This is the thing. We're not nobody, crazy. We don't. Nobody is. We don't want to no, burn down the world. There's no gun owner that's happy this week. 
this is ridiculous what this dude did. This is shameful. This is hurtful. This is right, this right, is tearing right. apart the country. This right, is right. not this is this is not what we're talking about. This is a, a dude who lost his shit. So, you know, obvi obviously. Yeah, I agree with you. So, but then again, you got these horror politicians that want to turn it into something else. So, but the point is, let's talk about you know the eighties. You drop out the mental health. Where's the mental health? They shut down all the all the places. You see. Well, you I can't know. you can't put anybody in a, against his will. But what, what, what I'm what I'm trying what to I'm what I'm trying to tell you is, if people were around that dude and paying attention to that dude that day, and they're watching a dude doing some crazy shit because everyone's watching. In Israel, it's not like this. In Israel, you get on a bus and you start fucking around on the bus, and you got five year olds attacking you. The whole place knows what's up. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so you get on a bus in Israel and start acting like an idiot. No ladies are beating your ass because that's what happens. <laughs> now, pull out their people, Uzi, it, now, it gets crazy enough around here and people are going to start watching people. And that's what you need to be doing anyways. You need to have your eyes open and pay attention to who's in front of you. You know what I'm saying? Well, you you need to, need to you, do that. Th 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 but this isn't what people's attitude is. Well, th th this is this is how uh, this is how crazy people go unnoticed because you yeah, don't want to yeah. you don't want to deal with it. Yeah, you know he, I, mean? I guess he didn't show I guess he wasn't the nicest guy in the world, I guess, but he wasn't showing any kind of... But but my point is, even even though, like, you know, several days before whatever, he's bringing in these bags. I mean, I understand that they're not That's anyone's us. fault for this. It's not anyone's fault necessarily, but a mindset. If enough people were seeing this and had the mindset to go, what the fuck? Well, the you, reason you know, why we you know what I mean? Who the knows? why we put the label crazy on it is for someone doing something that seems completely irrational. I mean, yes. you know, this guy was certifiably crazy. And this, it, and it, see, you know what? I don't know how much experience people have with crazy people. I've, like, since I was very young, I worked in hospitals and, and, and mental homes, like institutions, homes and stuff like that. And I've dealt with a lot of crazy people. And it always, I did this in New York. And I, and I used to work at a place in New York that was a halfway house for Creedmoor. So if you ever heard of Creedmoor, that was the oh, yeah. biggest, the biggest yep. uh, mental institution in New York. And this was a halfway house. So all these people, it was like 360 something residents that they would go to this halfway house. They were still on drugs and stuff like that. Most of them would wind up back in Creedmoor and then back in this halfway house. But when they were in that halfway house on all these medications and still batshit crazy, you could not confine them. So they were allowed to walk around on the streets and everything. And I would be on the subway seeing people like these these people in this place just standing next to people on the subway where they could they could just very easily push someone onto the train tracks and all kinds of craziness. And people don't realize it. And it blew my mind because I was like, wow, you 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 don't know how to tell crazy that the thought that you can recognize someone that's crazy. Listen, it's too late by the time you've realized that person's crazy. Lots of crazy people out there know how to fool people when they want to do these things. Well, yeah. And so there's just no way around it in the world. This is this is the price of living in the world. Yeah, you're right. You know, yes, you know, it's gotten you worse. Every, but you can't tell everything, but at least no. you can have your eyes open. For yeah, it. I agree with people that it's gotten worse. Times have gotten worse, but this is the price of living in the world. And health care and all that is, is horrible. Have you seen what's going on in healthcare? And these how are, ti how are times worse right now? I, yeah, I, not, it's not that times bad. Have, like, times have never been better. I, well, I, I went to middle school in 1985 in St. Pete, Florida. Massive crack epidemic. I mean, yeah, yeah. we were we were running from people. You know, you know what I'm saying? People were getting shot. In, in, some, in some ways, I would agree with you, but the there's still there's still a lot of gang violence going on. There's still a lot of drugs. Yes, we have technology. Uh, our lives are a little bit easier. I won't argue that, right? But what I'm what I'm saying to you is that the the, the one of the things that's going on here. If you go back to the '80s, I went to high school in the '80s and everything, right? I graduated high school in uh, 1988. Back in those times, we talked to each other. We weren't oh, yeah. divided over everything. You know, our music, there were only a few radio stations or whatever it was, so we all listened to the same. Like, you know, you had guys that were into goth, that were goth and you had the jocks and the nerds and everything, but we, we could talk to each other. We could communicate. Now we're just all separated, man. Everyone's, everyone's in their little boxes and doesn't respect other people's humanity. Well, That's what I think makes it worse. It, you know, like you're right, you know, back in the day, you could be, be either the jock or the, you know, the nerd or whatever, but at least you had a crowd, right? And it was yeah. okay. If you, it was okay for you to be in that crowd.
That's yes, what and crowds crossed or whatever every now and then. Sure, they, sure. But now sure. everyone's but, taking their, you know, you've got you've got football players who are millionaires and multimillionaires, and they're like, America's fucked up, institutional racism, I'm too rich. <laughs> you know? I mean, that's crazy. That's crazy. I, you know, I, I, we, we're I, definitely I, I, better off than other countries. And, and, and um, you know, and America is in some ways better than it used to be. But in other ways, it's worse, man. I'm, I'm just telling you, this thing that we're doing to each other where we don't talk to each other, we don't communicate, we're all separated into our little boxes. Well, a lot, of that's, a lot of that's the internet. See your little box? You know? Yeah, see, that's you one see of the your little, little box? Boxes. Yeah, that's Walk the, around out and see everybody talking on their little box. And, and Well, that's, you know? that's what I'm saying. Yeah, a lot of that's the internet. A lot of that's the availability of knowledge. Right. Yeah. And, and, you, know? and you always you, laugh at me. And people are desensitized by the stuff they do in their on their box yeah it's so true they, can't argue they, that they, one Walter. they kill people they well, rape people sure. they do all this stuff no big deal hey you know just another game right you know well, what, you're, you, what you're what you're what you're losing is the art of the conversation yeah. when you watch the news you watch the news about a bombing overseas by the time you see it on the news there's no bodies laying around no. It's all been cleaned up, so they won't. They won't show you what's 80, happening to our soldiers that are going overseas and dying. For, eighty people for died in a bombing reason. in Baghdad. You don't see any bodies or pieces of stuff. It's all you know, just a blown up car. Well, that's no big deal. Well, right? I, I, I mean, you could. <laughs> I mean, you it, know, it, it's the same thing. Who, who's sensitive? I mean, there fifty-five people were, fifty-nine people were killed the other day, and you, you know what I mean. There's, it, it's, it's going to be. It, it, it's going to go next year. Something else is going to happen because some crazy ass does what he does. You know what I mean? You know, in it, a month, it, in a month, it, it's on to something else. I guarantee you. So. It, yeah. in, in, in 10 years, we're going to be on the bus going, you know, yeah. who's you know how I, you know how who's, I know it's who's going to kick that dude's ass. You know how <laughs> I know it's crazy because back in the days when I was born in the seventies, um, you know, you're married or even if you're not married, but you're married and you know, you weren't intending on having a kid, but you got, you got a little tipsy one night you know, you got a little frisky. You hit it a little bit too hard. You know, the right sperm swam up the channel yes, and, 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 and made connection with the egg. You know, the birds and the bees shit happened. And you got pregnant and you didn't automatically go, oh, this is no big deal. I'll just go have an abortion. Today, it's like no big deal, man. It's no big deal. It was it was I'm not saying it's been happening for a long time. Right. Abortion was probably like invented by the Egyptians for all I know. But yeah. the thing is, is that it used to be like a thing that you went into and it was a big fucking deal. You know, you thought about this, you're like, oh man, you know, do it. Oh, I'm sure it's a big deal for whoever's going through went, that. Yeah, you went through things. Today, I mean, there's 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 people out there that have had like five abortions. Well. You know, and still haven't gone and tied their tubes or anything like that, right? Well, these are, yeah. these are people that don't think about, you know, Friday. Well, guess you know, what, today, man? You, you today's Thursday. Today's Thursday. We well, understand how to think about Friday. Yeah, we but, you, but what I'm Friday. trying to say to you is you could come down on the kid who's playing the video games and all that, right? But this is a person who's who's taking life, who's completely desensitized who's, to it, and why should they give a shit? Who's paying for that? Well, that's the thing. Follow, you know, follow, we, follow, the, follow the money. We who's used to have to pay for stuff. We used to have to pay right, for Right. Now you just go and you go and you and you plead poor and yeah. you get it you, done. People don't even want to pay for their prophylactics anymore, man. Well, well that was a, remember when they were gonna well we're not gonna get our free birth control. It's like it ain't it ain't Oh, it ain't. I say you hand that out quick. Well Pass I'd say it out. <laughs> <laughs> Pass yeah, it I, guess, I, mean, just, I throw them fucking things at people. Not at my dime. Sh shoot sure. condoms at people, man. Just I mean yeah. this is part of the problem, right? Yeah, I think we have a lot of problems in the world. And the yeah, thing but, is, know, a, lot of, like, a lot of it's mindset. You know, uh, Hank, right. you know, people that don't think about next week ever don't don't have the same mindset that we that people who have plans and actually go through life and say, hey, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. You know, some people pull the laundry out of the laundromat, right, or out of the washing machine, and they and they they stare at it for days, you know, and some people just put it up. You know what I mean? Yeah. And you have put it up, people, and stare at it for days, people. Uh, Walter's throwing up guns. Walter, yeah, yeah, this is two different mindsets, is my point. Yeah, I agree with you. I think if you live, if you live in uh, the city, let's say, and you go out and eat every day, and you could, you can go to the bodega <laughs> downstairs or something and get stuff every day, then you don't think about it. If you live out in the country and it's like half an hour, an hour for you to go to grocery store, That's a pain in the ass out there. Yeah, you think a lot about what you know you're doing. 
But what, what I'm trying to say to you is we have, we have things to deal with. But the way that we deal with things in 2017 going into 2018 is worse than how we used to deal with it. Because, you know, you're dealing with people who have like a set agenda. And no matter what, they want to take shit away from us. And this is why, like, I am so staunchly. I know lots of people are going to say I'm just being ignorant and, and refusing to budge and all that kind of stuff. But the, I want to see those guys' hands first. You know, I want to see what those guys are willing to give up first before I even, like, well, add them you, the thought of thinking let me, let me about just having tell a you one thing. about what I'm giving up. Let me tell you up. one thing. You're wasting your time because they're not going to give anything. So, yeah, there's no well, there sense. For, what, are you, what are you showing us here, Walter? The Rattler. Oh, nice. I'm, uh, te I'm, I'm teasing the uh, audience. Are you, willing to, are you willing to give that up? What? No. <laughs> Have you ran it? Have you ran Not it? Not yet. I haven't had a chance yet. Haven't had a chance. Okay. Sweet. Very nice. Um, five, in, five and a half inch barrel, right? Correct. 10 4. That's uh, really, really kind of small one. And they are. I'm not really an AR guy. I know a little bit, but that's kind of small one. And they are, right? Well, it's, this one's 300 blackout, but yeah, it's. it's okay. Um, that's still small, yes. Yeah. The reason the reason SIG has come up with this, the main reason is that um, SOCOM has a PDW requirement. Hold it up a um, little bit higher, just a little touch higher. There you go. Okay, cool. I mean, it's a really slick, slick, slick yeah. looking gun. I see you have a Vortex on there. It looks like. Is yeah, that I got that. I got that deal from Palmetto State Armory, where you, where you get you get the Vortex, you get the Vortex and ten mag uh, Magpul mags for one ninety. Okay, so now so you're gonna use all those Magpul mags for three hundred blackout, right? I'm going to use them for something. I don't know yeah. what So are you going to specially mark your 300 blackout magazine so you don't mix up well, ammo? The, the mags I have are not specialty mags. So, I mean, oh, yeah. keep. I don't keep a lot of loaded magazines. I'm not fanatical uh, about that, okay? Yeah. Uh, I think I, it is a good idea to, like, put something. Like, some companies, Faxon has these little red rubber bands yeah. they sell that have 300 blackout on them or, you know, yeah. do something. I, I, slap, like, I, I slap on different uh, kinds of duct tape on the bottom butt plate. Yeah, yeah, my my G twenty my G twenty one has uh, neon neon orange on them all. It wouldn't okay, be very, bad at all. Okay, don't say I didn't warn you, Walter. So if it happens, and um, I'm rolling video on it, and you mix up some stuff, I will post that to the internet. <laughs> one time, bless, bless your heart. One time I was out shooting AK, I was shooting out my AK with a friend, and we're at the range, and he's loading mags, and we go boom, 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 and then it makes this like. This funny sound. It goes off. Uh -huh. What the hell was that? We picked up a 223 round. And no way. It. Yeah, and it went off. No the way. Case, the case expanded and cracked, but it went right out the. Yeah. I, it fits, but, right? It's it, it, smaller, right? It, it made this weird ass sound when it went off. Uh -huh. like a, like Did a you hollow. look at that barrel after that? No, it didn't hurt it. It's an AK. Oh, okay. Come on. Yeah. Dude, I was shooting a 357 <laughs> mag. I was shooting a 357 Magnum once and I uh, shot around and then I hit the next one. And it's and it squibbed and it was caught in the barrel. You know what I mean? Whoa. Oh yeah. And it yeah. sounded just a, just enough off that I was like, "What the hell? I, I better I better inspect this." Sure oh, yeah, enough, that's man. Carefully. Totally <laughs> stuck in the barrel. That Very scary. Yeah. Very scary. Yeah. Let me uh let me take this opportunity here to remind everyone: click the thumbs up button. Come on, give us your support. Click the thumbs up button. Definitely make sure you share this video with your. Share friend. that bad boy. Share that video. We're gonna get into some knives. Let's get back. Okay, stop. Yeah, let's talk knives. Uh, yeah, let's no, let's talk knives. Market. Stop. Uh, I'm gonna put it on you, brother. All right. Show us. Right. Start. Let's go through some knives, guys. Let us know what questions you have for Stomp. Yeah. We'll hit I'll it tell up. you. What, I, I'll tell you what I'll do is I'll uh, I'll get a little mobile here, and uh, I'll show you. Uh, I'll show you both walls. Kind That's of a detail. nice ceiling up there, though. Yeah. Thanks, brother. <laughs> So this is, uh, you know, obviously the store is online mainly, but at my house you can come for appointments. And this is a bunch of stuff we have here. Oh, cool. This is Ricky Idlet up top right here. Okay. I'm going to get this knife down the show yeah, right so, now. Yeah, is that the one that you – yeah, okay. So that's the one yeah. with the big um, – big So nut, we'll get this. The big nut on it. I'll take this over to show, and you want to see anything else, let me know. Um, yeah, let's let, – you know what? Step back a little bit and let everyone take a little bit of a look at the wall. So if folks – if there's something, I think um, people said they want to see the knucks. The knucks, yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, and okay. they want to know how much the knuckle that, that, busters are. We have th this wall over here. Mm -hmm. I see it got some monkey fist over there too. Is that what those are? Um, yeah, I got a, I got a little bit of everything to show you in front of me here, and I can reach okay. and grab. Yeah, I yeah. just wanted to give you a general overview right there. Yeah. Okay. Okay. 
All right, let me get yeah. this up here. And then so we'll, we'll do a little, yeah. If uh, you we'll guys little, let us know what you want to see, um, we'll do some show and tell. I'll show you. Yeah, um, we'll definitely. You know, this, people like uh, the brass knuckles. Uh, okay, so uh, here we go. We got some yeah. coral. Um, Shaman Bill says red handle with the hole. What's this one? You okay? Let's look at this. This is wood. Are, this is made out of burl. Oh, nice. Oh, That's so. luxurious. That's like in a Bentley. Yeah, these are beautiful. These are That's absolutely like, beautiful. That's like punching somebody so, with style. So let me ask yeah, you a we, question. Let me ask yeah, you a question. If it's made out of wood, is it still considered? They are. Uh, they are considered paperweights. Oh, nice. <laughs> but oh. these are kind of light paperweights that will will not get hung up if they were in your pocket going through some security or whatnot. Oh, yeah, that's oh, what, dear. Oh, oh okay. dear. Oh, dear. Okay. Very nice. Very <laughs> nice. I, I got a pair here with my uh, logo on <laughs> Oh, you mean so when I go to oh, wait, hold on. Let me lock it. I don't have you locked in. Okay, so there's the logo. So what are these Um, what are these going for, Stomp? $75. $75. Bucks. Okay, yeah. that's very nice. Now, we have real brass knuckles, too, and they go a variety – Something like this. Now, have you um, one have you, one twenty five? But it has a lot of handwork on it. Okay, and that's actual brass. Yes. Okay. So, have you tested the um, wood knuckles? On you know, have you done the testing of these wood the, knuckles? The uh, the maker backs them up to uh, do push ups on them and does uh, uh, several things like that. And you know, you don't want to start smashing these into things. You might break them and be real disappointed. You know what I mean? You need to take care of your stuff. But you might uh, hurt. Yeah. You might hurt yourself too. If you uh. <laughs> I, I'll tell you what, if you hit somebody with them, they're done. These are uh, plywood. Oh, okay, <clears throat> laminated, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, these are plywood, and, you know, check this out. This guy's a master. He just went Okay, so time. these are really for, like, show? No, no, no. These absolutely work. Oh, they work, okay. Oh, they're super okay. light, too. They, they, they're they way lighter than a normal pair. You throw it in your pocket and walk around all day. Yeah, I would want some knuckles. I would want some. Uh, I would want some with little studs in there too, like something oh. that adds a little, well, little yeah, extra we got, pain. We got extra. A, I got. I got that. I, I got that. <laughs> Just a little extra pain. Yeah. Extra pain. Yeah. There you go. Just that. Oh yeah. There we go. Hold on one second. Let me lock this in. Oh yeah. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah. This is. Uh, this is. Uh, how you doing there? This yeah. is, uh, I, ca I call this boo. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> very nice this is uh nice. so what this is, is, what is what's the name of this? this is integral implements this guy uh creates everything he does with a with a mill oh that's a skull by hand yes a yeah that's smiley a skull. smiley yeah face. so how much is that this is uh 120 nice i like that yeah these, these are made by uh these are milled out so yeah. uh very uh, nice you know you guys know what a karambit is uh, now I do. This a what? A, this is a karambit. Oh, a karambit, yes. Mm -hmm. So this is a this is a Ex tool. Explain, explain to folks. Yeah, explain it. This is a tool designed in Bali as an agricultural tool, where you would cut whatever item you're harvesting and you would drop it into a basket and you would be able to open your hands with it, right? Mm -hmm. And then uh, it very quickly turned into a, you know, a really good knife for butter and bread. Mm -hmm. You know. <laughs> You so folks want to know how do they order these stuff? How do they? If you can, uh, you can get a hold of me uh, at uh, through uh, Facebook Messenger right now or Instagram Messenger. Okay. Yeah. And I and I'll get back with you. And the website's going to be up by November, and uh, we've been building it for a year. I'm not going to release it early. I'm going to let these guys really build their stores and have a very nice presentation for the customers. And uh, I, you know, this isn't uh, my full time job. I, I want to do this correctly. Okay. We have some uh, different levels of builds. I want to kind of explain this to you. Oh, this when, is nice. When a person's building a knife, right, they have to decide what their material is going to be first. So this maker right here is Gunny's Edge, and he used a, a rasp for this knife. Is that a fish scale or what? This, what is this, this, this is an old rasp. This is a, a file. file. A file. Oh, so, oh, this is a oh, I see. So for those, takes, for those who don't know terminology, that's a file. Yeah. He takes oh. he takes he takes these down for tool steel, right? So wow. you have a you have a guy that does this, okay? So he takes an old tool and makes it new, and and this this is a ridiculously uh, good price at at uh, I believe it's seventy five. Uh, wow. No, 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 it's one hundred and fifteen dollars. Really, okay. that's one hundred and fifteen bucks with a sheath. Uh -huh. Yes, oh, with I a have, sheath. What kind of sheath? Um, it would be very, uh, let me see if I can find it real quick. Okay. Cause that looks like a nice press right there. I like that. Uh, I, 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 
I'll show you a similar sheath. How's that? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, obviously, we're doing this real, like, you know, we're, we're doing no, I, this running gun I, style. I, I, I pulled a bunch of stuff out to show yeah. you guys. So, so anyone who's really good. interested in here, you know, follow Stomping You Customs on same Facebook maker, and right? you will. Oh, this okay. That's the same maker. He makes his sheaths with wire. Very strong. Oh, cool. That's, and then yeah. this, is, this is a Tanto. Look how sick this is. Yeah. This is made from an old lawnmower. You know the disc blades? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. So and the what's the handle on that? What kind of wood is that? This is from Africa. Really? Yeah, that looks um This is badass. Yeah. This, this is this this <laughs> that is that wood looks of, familiar to me, but I don't this know. is this is African wood. This you know what God, this, the guy who made this, this is actually my knife. I have okay. another I have a, I, it's actually they're all for sale. They're all my knives. I I, I can't get off them. So this uh this guy got this on a, a mission for soldiers that got injured. He went back to Africa on a mission to, um, like, they, you know, you take people over who have been injured for vacation or whatnot. You know, I forget mm -hmm. the name of it. And this is a piece of wood he got on that vacation. Okay, nice. Okay. In Africa. So this type of blade, you know, this is, uh, uh, this is a different make uh, compared to a guy who makes a perfect knife. I'm going to show you a perfect knife right now, okay? Okay. Okay. All right, so... It's all you. It's all you. We got the screen locked. Our eyes are peeled. <laughs> we are all up in these knives, right, Walter? <laughs> yes, we are. I'm just. I'm playing yeah. with my. I'm playing with my. You're playing with yourself, Walter. Yeah, I'm playing with myself. You see this knife? Yes, sir. This is made by a 73 year old Japanese master. Oh, cool. Now, in Japan, when I order these, they have to sell them as kitchen knives. They cannot <laughs> sell martial blades. So I get the knife, and then I have this rewrapped by a master here. And this is Stingray skin inside traditional wrap that you would uh, have. So on in a, Japan, on a, they, they can't sell it overseas? Unless correct. It's, okay, it's, but the people in Japan can buy them, right? Uh, yes. Or no? I, I assume. Maybe not. Yeah. Some some of the stuff, in, you can't buy swords and stuff in Japan. I know that. Well, yeah, or, or knives, or, or what they would call martial knives. So this is sold with a real basic wrap when I get them and then I have them rehandled. This is a yeah. perfect knife though. This is this is beaten out with a hammer. This is not stock removal. I will explain that if you'd like. Yeah. Okay, stock so, removal is um, where Murph just says Hattori Hanzo, which is a reference to Kill Bill. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So this is that type of knife right here. This is perfect. It's hand forged and then they hand forged, yeah. rehandled by another master named Art Maldonado. Hmm. He's out of uh, he's out of uh, little north of me here. This is a beautiful uh, ebony handle. Look at this. Somebody is telling Lola to keep me in line. I don't know what I did. <laughs> you, you see, now this blade here is. <laughs> check out the finish on this blade. You see this scale? Uh huh. This is a blade that has not been polished out to be. This is a like a user blade. This would be a lower price blade because he didn't spend so much time making it shiny. This oh, is how this is how it looks coming out of the fire, right? Right. Mm -hmm. Now this blade here is massive. It's thick. It's wow. real big. Okay. You yeah. could crank open doors with that thing. It, that's what I'm trying to tell you. It's same maker, same steel. Mm -hmm. Do you see the finish on this? Yes. It's oh. perfect. Yeah. Right. You see that Hammond line? Oh yeah. That is where they put clay on top of the blade. To oh, make okay. a different differentiated heat treatment, the clay on top makes the top part of the blade uh, harder, Mura. and the bottom part of the blade's softer. So, or the bottom part's hard, the top part's right, soft. Right. So, so it has some flexibility. So it, so it can flex. Right. This and is we'll, a massive. This is massive essentially a, a, a small sword. Yeah. Same same price. So Adam L says, "I hope you don't live in an earthquake con uh, country with that wall of death." He's in Florida. We don't have earthquakes. We have uh, yeah. instead we have uh, tornadoes, hurricanes. hurricanes, crazy people. Uh, uh, yeah. What is it? Uh, 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 Yankees, sinkholes. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, come on now, Walter. Uh, well, everybody, hey, everybody hey, else. October, the end of October, the the great migration starts south again from all the snowbirds. So that's oh. the fact of life here. Yeah. This so let, get, me, this let me, let me, let me mm -hmm. go ahead. Go ahead. Stop. Let me, let me give you a lesson on uh, how knives are made. Okay. So, um, I told you this is a hand forged knife. This means this was beaten out with a, a machine or a hammer into this, into this 
Beautiful shape. Perfectly. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So this is what they call stock removal. <laughs> Babyface said those blades make him harder. <laughs> stock oh. stock removal is where you take a design and you cut it out with Ooh. like an angle grinder. Oh wow. Okay. Or you cut it out with a laser machine mm -hmm. and you remove stock around a piece of metal and then you grind out the blade right. and the distal taper. Okay. So you make it a little bit easier to do. It's not necessary. It, it, it's a lot less equipment intensive. It's what you would do, uh, what 90% of makers make, okay? When you're talking about the difference between a stock removal blade and a hand forge, you're talking about beating a piece of metal into submission. Mm -hmm. You have to keep putting it in the fire. You've seen it in every show. Mm -hmm. It takes days to make a knife like that, right? Yeah. This, is, this, is a, this is beaten into submission. Uh, okay. This is a stock removal, excuse me. Okay. You can see it was taken yeah. away from an old tool. Yeah. Okay? Let so, me show you a couple uh, other things. Uh, uh, let's just let's just okay. Let's just take a little a little break here. Sure. Um, just for a quick second. Um, someone's asking about the T-shirt now. Um, is that a one-off T-shirt you have there, or do you have other T-shirts? No, I do have them for sale. They're twenty dollars shipped right now. Okay. On sale. So someone is saying someone wants us to like give away one of the T-shirts. But uh, here's what I will do, man. If you guys can share this video enough that we can get like I can see. We've got right now like 65 viewers live. If you guys click the thumbs up and share the video and we get to 100, how about we give away a shirt, Stomp? Yeah, 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 yeah. I got yeah. that. Yeah. Let's, so just keep sharing it. Keep clicking the thumbs up. Keep sharing it. If we can get to 100, we'll give it a, you know, that's like, uh, you know. I have, a, I have three styles, too. Uh, yeah. Um, limited sizes because it's obviously a small operation. Yeah. So, but I got you know. big. I got I got the four XLT. So I big dude. Say, you're a big guy. You gotta have the. <laughs> I got I got I got, I got any extra small. I got I got <laughs> large through four XLT. I got the fat boy sizes. I got one medium left and a red uh, a red logo. Uh, yeah. yeah. Listen, if we can get it up to a hundred, you know, I'd say we give away like a couple of shirts, and then we'll see what what goes going there. You know, we give away like two shirts or something. How about that? We can give do that. Away. Let's get up to 100. So you guys need to share this up, and then we'll get – those are very cool shirts. I'm going to have to get one. Yeah, thank so, you, sir. So, okay. Um, all right. So then let me hit a couple of questions that, that folks have. Uh, they want to know where you're located. Okay, I'm in St. Petersburg, Florida. The, uh, the website is uh, – I have a lot of knives listed on Facebook right now and a lot of knives listed on Instagram. Uh, I can send you pictures of uh, the whole wall, and you can blow it up and tell me what you want to see. And uh, very soon the website's going to be out, but don't let that stop you. Uh, I've been selling knives now for a, a year now, to, and uh, people have been uh, very happy. Uh, the experience isn't going to be what you're used to. We're going to actually talk and have a video conference. I want to, I want to see who I'm selling to and um, and uh, bring new people into this world. Okay, very cool. So now the other question that um, I've got on here is, um, okay, is there a storefront? Uh, no, like it's, it's, it, it's by appointment on the weekends and after five o'clock during the week, Eastern Standard Time. Okay, so if someone's in the uh, Saint Saint Petersburg area, or no problem. Yeah. Think, okay. Think, yep. No problem. Do you? So and it doesn't. It's by appointment, and you'll do it on the weekends. You said. I after five o'clock Eastern Standard Time, Monday through Friday, and uh, by appointments on the weekend. Okay. Cool. Okay. And then um, the other question that we have here is: Do you yourself build knives? No, that was a decision I had to make a couple of years ago. A uh, little bit of personal history. I was a very uh, fun-loving, uh, active alcoholic for about, you know, I'm 44. <laughs> so I did this from 14 to 40. And when I, uh, when I uh, got into the hospital at 40, I had to think, find something to, uh, to uh, you know, obsess about. That's what it's about, right? So I uh, started buying custom knives. And I'd already been a knife collector and a gun guy and all that. And then uh, I had a few experiences, and I decided to make this a better experience for makers and for buyers. Okay, cool. So um, what, what Stomp's doing here is he's kind of like an agent, sort of, right, where he's putting all yeah. these really cool knife makers together because, as he said in the beginning, and I'm sure you'll say it yeah, again, I mean, you know, make these guys it, are artists. You, so when, you make, when you make stuff, sometimes you don't always want to be the maker and the – the sales whore? Yeah, the marketer, and you have to right, run right, down, yeah, so. and then you got to collect money. You got to talk to their crazy gotta, asses. <laughs> thank you. And, and it's, getting them, it's, it's getting them out there. I mean, these makers yeah, yeah. all have fans that have already yeah. bought them from them. So no one's actually talking about their knife and uh, making yeah. people know. Like, uh, yeah. I'm going to show you a guy that just how many How many has, followers do you have on your Facebook page for stomping you? Let me see. About, fi about 500. 
Okay, let's see. Yeah, let's get that up, man. Come on, guys. Let's you know. Let's go to Stomping You Customs. I just put a link in the yeah. um, in the okay. chat room here. Everyone, go and like Stomping You Customs. Okay, let's get those. Uh, let's get those numbers up on it. Go ahead. Let, let me talk about this knife for a little bit. Absolutely. This is what we call the heirloom knife. This is made by Blasted Hill. Mike is an unbelievable guy. He's a full time accountant in his meditation, and every night he bangs knives out. That is very artistic. Now, like this that. is these are coins from my father when he died. Oh, wow. Okay. So what we do uh, is I get a hold of, uh, I, I, I put you with the maker, and then you can send him things, and he can put this in your coin in your knife and build this custom to you. These are my favorite colors. Oh, cool. So he can put things that are personal to you into the certain s Certain type of things that can be anchored properly. Yeah. Archangels, like these are, these Archangel. are pinned in. Archangel says today is my 14th year of sobriety. Good That's job, good. brother. Good job. Awesome. Keep, you know, keep it up. This One day at a knife. time. This is another knife by Presh that I had designed. This is my design made by him. These are our push knives. These are not like any other push knife you'll ever see. Very cool. And these, uh, these are these are designed to actually be used as a skinner. An actual an actual useful push knife. Single bevel. And will absolutely take care of business if it needs to. Yeah, I think Meredith Mayhem says also have a forge in full shop. That's cool. Uh, we got. I don't know if we've um, spoken in depth to Meredith Mayhem about that. Are you looking for new knife makers to come in? Um, what we need to do is uh, I need to sit down and, and look at their uh, what they previously made through pictures and whatnot. And of course, I am. I'm also looking for additional artists for things that uh, I'm into. It is called Stomping New Customs for a reason. I sell what I'm into, and I hope you're into it too. I can't uh, explore too far, in, uh, but I, I, I like art of all kind. I'm obviously in the necklaces. I'm obviously in the rings. You're into <laughs> rings. You should be selling rings because you got some bodacious rings. <laughs> the, these are, I actually do. These are, I, 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 these are through SkullJewelry.com. Yeah. Very, I, very cool company. I have a, if you want a discount, use my name in the checkout, Stomp. Oh, you, you may not believe this, but when I met Lola, I used to, uh, I used to get rings like that all the time. I've always been obsessed with skulls. Oh, me too, dude. Me too, for yeah. sure. For sure. <laughs> so, I would, where's, yeah. your, where's, your, where's your cup, Hank? Where's your cup? You got your cup? cup your look cup? at that. Yeah, this is what Walter got for me when he was on vacation. Oh, nice. Nice skull cup, you know. So, yeah, I like let, skulls. Let, let, me, let me tell you, you this know. is uh, what you don't notice, guys, is you haven't seen the logo too close, but what the logo really is, it's a skull with AK-47 teeth. Can you see that? Uh, hold on. Okay, there we go. Whoa. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I, I like skulls too. Yeah. So let me um, hit up some questions here. I'm going to let Walter probably has a, a few questions. Yes, Archangel sir. Archangel wants to know, uh, will you make a Hank Strange edition for the Stranger Holics? <laughs> so, um, we can, uh, I, I absolutely can get a lot of stuff built exactly the way people want it. Okay, so if you have an idea and you want to draw it up and do a specific drawing with details and measurements and whatnot, I have people that are, don't mind taking on challenges. Oh, okay, cool. So yeah, maybe we'll, we'd have to get in there and design a special Hank Strange edition. I think if people showed enough um, interest in that, we can we can maybe get in there. I know it's going to cost some money. So um, do you see something like this? Mm -hmm. This is a design I have called the Jobber. So That's this cool. knife comes with a pry bar or a bottle opener. Hold on, just a second. Let me slide back. And what we do here is, I just saw a knife on that wall that I'm interested in, but I'll let you go, go ahead and oh, do there's this. A few we'll, come back, we'll come back to I, it. Don't I forget to click the thumbs up button and share I, this video, people. I haven't got to the monsters yet. Oh, okay. Okay, okay so this is, uh, this is what I call a small jobber. Hmm. Okay, these go for 130. You pick the scales. Okay. You pick the hand, you pick the blade, four choices of blades. Now you can either pick a bottle opener. Oh, I see. For your tool, or the one I way prefer, a pry bar. Ah. Uh -huh. So now this is made out of stainless steel. This is not high carbon, which means you can sweat in this all day long and not worry about it rusting. Mm -hmm. This is has jimping. This is made to suit. This is a worn cliff style blade. This is a large jobber. This is 150. We build this to how you like it. So you pick the handle, you pick the blade, you pick the tool, you make your knife. You have either a leather sheath or Kydex. This is Blasted Hill. 
Okay, so can that sheath um, go like alongside a belt, right? You know, horizontal can, to a belt. You would have that made however you like. You can have it up and down the belt. I prefer to carry a knife like this, right here. You see this? Yeah, I like that. Yeah, me too. So this, uh, this, do, show that again. This is where I carry my my personal EDC. Oh, like right. a belt knife. Yeah, it's just right underneath my gut, right? So no one right. knows it's there. <laughs> so you know, if I hide it, right? But then this is my real personal, right? This is my big boy. Yeah, that that's a knife. You got knife there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. this is this is the way everybody carried back in 1830. This is called sash carry. I'm gonna back up a little bit and show this. You see that? Right. So back in the day you would just do this. Just cover it up. You see that now? Mm-hmm. Now someone comes up and fucks with you, you know what I mean? <laughs> and you got twelve inches of bowie. You said I've been sit I've been sitting with this for three hours today since I got home from work. So this is Very you know cool. most some people carry knives, some people carry guns. I carry knives. Okay, but you are but a gun you, guy. You, you put yeah, you know, I got a lot of guns. Not yeah. a lot. I got a, I got a, I got a few. Not a lot compared <laughs> enough, to enough. Enough. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I could definitely shoot. <laughs> or as I say, I, I, I have a couple. Yeah. yeah. Or you know, sometimes I tease people and I go, "Well, how many do you have?" And then I just I don't like, know. I got a lot. Mine's, mine's bigger. Mine's bigger than yours. <laughs> you know, I'm gonna come correct, right, Hank? Yeah. So DC Two Mega Boost wants to know if you've got any pocket folders. Yeah, I do. I have. Uh, this is. Uh, oh, nice, nice. Is my, hold on a sec. Hold on. I gotta lock this in. The okay, what is this? Chinese. This, this is just a a, a Yugo. Okay, that's with, good. With a with um. Got a red dot? An Ultimac, Bushnell, and a flashlight. Nothing expensive. Oh, well, yeah. That's pretty much what you need. You got a underfolder. Yeah, you've got a strap on there, you know. I mean it'll get the, it'll get the job done. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's my normal that's my pig gun. And then I have a I I'm sort of fascinated with AKs. I got a few AKs and a few shotguns and a few blocks and you know, normal shit. Mm -hmm. A few things. Yeah. Yeah, okay. So uh you wanna so, see some mon you wanna see a, a couple monsters? Uh, well, I think uh, DC2 Mega Boost wanted to know about pocket folders. Let's hit the pocket folders and we'll go to right. the big boys. Here we go. This is one of the only ones so, I have on me that's a handmade folder. Okay. This is called a Nemesis. You see that little thing in the back there? Yep. Looks like a trigger. Mm -hmm. This is a flipper. Okay. So that's a, a trigger for the knife. And there's no it. assist. You just open any, it up. Oh, any, any of your guys uh, do any auto knives? No. Okay. This is actually a pry bar tip. So yeah, you can use this knife to just, you just work it. It's a pry bar. Yeah. You can't even cut yourself too much with that tip. It's designed to work. <laughs> it's badass. Look at it. Look how straight that is. That yeah. profile. No, it's pretty cool. Yeah, I like it. It's ridiculous. Yeah. So something like this is, uh, is absolutely handmade. Every spec of it to how you like it. You choose the you choose the handles, yeah. you choose the blade, you choose everything. The weight on this knife is typically a year for this maker. Oh, really? But if you order through my store, you get it in two months. Wow. Okay. He start he starts making it right away when you okay. order through Stomp Stompin' New Customs. Okay. Um, Danimal two one nine says I have those KZ light mounts on like six different rifles. They're the best. So yeah, I, I that rifle's been sitting set up like that for six years you know it's gone hunting many times hasn't gotten nothing but it's been hunting many times it's been banged around it's you know it's a under folder so i can take it wherever the hell i want real real quick you know mm -hmm. i don't shoot a lot because of uh you know ammo, ammo and whatnot but when i go i don't i, I like an under folder I, I i like knowing i'm shooting when you're shooting an under folder the trick is open your mouth Okay. <laughs> it, it it doesn't uh it doesn't rattle so much, right? You you give uh, it a little bit of you give it a little bit of play, so you just open your mouth when you're shooting. That's we got it, Hank. We got to get him, we got to get him behind a fifty cal. Fuck yeah! <laughs> you, Dude, you're gonna be yeah. wide open on that <laughs> one. <laughs> I'll, 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 give me. I'll, I'll, I'll double shoot that bitch with wrist straps and then take me to the hospital after. I got, I got insurance. <laughs> yeah. So um. <laughs> So I think you said that the turnarounds, what's the, turn, do the different knives have different turnaround times? Okay. So everything you see available on the wall is available, right? And then the makers are going to have stuff that they're coming out with on top of what they're making for people that are actually sold. So they have what is called books 
And some people open their books up and have knives they're making. In addition, they'll make other knives as well. So you can have a bunch of knives that are available at any time in Stomping New Customs. But also, there will be what is called made to order. So you'll see a, a maker will describe or show five or six versions of a knife. And then you can order that to order. And then they would get to work on that order and put you ahead on their books. Oh, cool. Walter, so the, get, I'm sorry, go ahead. So uh, there's a little bit of a perk ordering through the store is my point. Oh, cool. Okay, so that's something you've negotiated out. Walter, did you have some questions you want to hit before we move on to the big boy knives? No, no, you're, I'm, I'm getting it all. I'm getting it all. Okay, cool. All right, so... Um, all right, so uh, let me show you like uh, what I consider like the, one, of the, one of the sickest things I've ever seen in my life when I saw it. And uh, mm -hmm. I, uh, I uh, developed a real good friendship with the guy I bought it from, and he's turned into my knife aficionado. His name is um, uh, Valentino, and uh, Valentino is like a, a six foot nine uh, guy from New York City, and uh, has more rings and knives than I ever thought of having, and knows everything about him. And he turned me on to this maker that just is the nicest guy named Ricky Idlet. Ooh, and and this is Ricky's masterpiece. I I was able to track down, and and find, and it's never been used. This is called Mad Max. Oh, that's the one with the nut on the end, huh? Oh. Yeah, so this is this is uh insanity. So what's the hilt? The hilt okay, is the, brass? Yeah, this is brass. Okay. Okay, so we turn it around here and I'm gonna show you this side. And this is the symbol symbol from the movie. Mm hmm Right? And then we come down here and if you look at the handle, I'm gonna come in tight on this if I can. If you look at this handle, this is scenes from the movie. Oh, I see. Uh, yeah. cool. That's the monster truck, right? Right. And then so I'm turning it over, turning it around. And this is Mad Max from the actual cartoon. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. So uh, the, that begs the question here. How much does this knife cost? This is uh, $725. $725? Okay. This nut is a whole story by itself. And how many of them are available? This is it. This will never be made again. Oh, this is a one-off. Okay. This is a one-off. This nut is uh, from a 1922 steam engine. The guy who makes this knife is named Ricky Idlet. Ricky Idlet is a very, very smart dude who can fix and make anything. And he is the third engineer on the world's largest steamboat. And this nut is from that steamboat. Yeah. So Kill Wolf wants to know how that's done. And, this, is, uh, uh, this is a stock removal where he took a piece of metal yeah. and cut out what the shape he wanted. And he uses an angle grinder. He doesn't use any yeah. fancy tools. Yeah, and for any uh, uh, for anyone who wants to know, uh, like TJ Blaze, if you want to know, because he says he doesn't think we're getting to the free T-shirt goal. You know what? Here's what I'm going to do. If we don't get to that, it's fine. I'm actually just going to ask. Uh, I'm going to ask Stomp to pick two people on his Facebook. So go to his Facebook, like the Facebook, and leave a comment that you found out about him um here of course on the hank strange situation that you saw him uh, i'll show. tell you what put in my uh put in my phrase i have a phrase stomp strong stomp strong there you go so put in stomp strong and and he'll give th those t-shirts will get given away okay trust me i like giving away stuff to people especially when it's not my stuff you can ask walter <laughs> yeah, that's that's what this nut that's what this nut's for that's what this nut's for hank yeah that's that's for bashing heads in hank yeah yeah and for anyone who wants slow to down, know son slow down yeah. son for anyone yeah, who wants yeah. to know i'm gonna have some i'm gonna have some dessert while we're doing this i got some flan had lola uh, brought me mexican food uh, yeah you didn't bring me oh, um, a mexican what, that would have been I nice have? a nice cute Mexican girl would have been nice, but she didn't do that. She brought hey, me food hey, instead. Hey, I, got a, so. I got a real question here. Stop yeah. your jaw there. What kind of what kind of sheath comes with the with the big nut knife? I'll show you that. I got that out right now. That's got to be kind of radical too, doesn't it? Oh yeah. You... I got to unplug and plug back in. Here we go. All right. So this is for that. It looks like a Mad Max feed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this has available to go over your belt, right? Right. You put it put it on your belt, wear it back, tracker style, or you can hang it off a belt loop off the side. Okay. Yeah. Now, for everyone that wants to put Stomp Strong, put it in the Facebook. Go to the Facebook page, open it up in another window, 
Uh, make sure you like his page. Put Stomp Strong in there in the comments, and he's going to pick two people out of there and get you guys a T-shirt. Um, did we answer the question of how you get the um, how you get the Mad Max the the uh, the artwork into that? Knife? I have no idea. He had those handles made by another another artist, so uh, okay. he 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 paid somebody and probably gave them the the uh, what 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 picture he wanted and sent it to him, and they had it infused into the handle. You know, this like I told you, this is an art. I don't know <laughs> a quarter of the stuff I'm supposed to. I'm um, I'm just being honest with you. I yeah. got my first custom knife three years ago, so I'm learning too. These yeah. makers are true are truly figuring out some stuff. You know, who who's ever just watched Game of Thrones and and wondered what they would have with Jon Snow. Who watches that, right? Yeah. You ever done something like that and said, what What would you have? So, like, you know, I have access to makers, and, you know, I'm sort of crazy. So, uh, I'm pretty sure Jon Snow will have some kind of, like, uh, obviously it would be a wolf blade with, a, like, a wolf head of some sort. But. Well, yeah, but you got to think about yourself, Hank. What would you be yeah. carrying with Jon Snow? Oh, what would I be carrying? Probably this a massive is- axe like what you're about to show right here. Yeah, this is what I was yeah, wearing. Yeah, yeah. Battle axe. Yeah. Yeah, this is this is, that, is my de- my design on a battle axe. It's, it's a stomp. Stomp. Oh. Very nice. Very nice. Is that wrapped in copper? I'll show you in a sec. Yeah. This is a three sided tomahawk head that I saw one day and I had it made into a massive, massive, massive. That's sexy. Yeah, this is copper wrapped around the handle with leather, leather grip. It has a forty inch handle with a spike on the end. Oh my god! Made of made of wood, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, I got videos of me absolutely beating the piss out of this thing. I think so Nancy, some, Nancy so, Pelosi would not like this. Well, yeah, well, whatever. <laughs> Give her the spike in. So, you know? so ah. this is that's the uh, war hammer, and then this is this is my take on a. Uh, oh shit. No, <laughs> don't chop up the uh, don't chop up the iPad there. <laughs> okay, so this is uh. This is a, my take on what uh what you're gonna see if you come in my house. Oh yeah, oh. this is a that's seventeen. A, that's inch, a sword. This is a seventeen inch Bowie with a ten inch handle, sort of designed after a Japanese style, but with an American feel. <laughs> that's nice. Oh hell yeah, it is. So look at that cut on the back. This whole entire top part sharp. That's like one of those. Uh, that could be a good zombie knife too. You know, you just. Like, well, that's it. That's it, Walter. You just hold it out and let someone run into you. <laughs> this is designed for bears. It's just designed for you. To, you know, you watch movies, right? So. Yeah. I'm thinking, what? What do you do if the bears attack? You just hold it. You know, let them run up on you. Yeah. I get but yeah, this is two handles. Uh, an idiot can use this. You know, you just hold it and real, real short, real fast. You know. So, it's got a little brother blade. So in case you need to do some, you know, light whittling or whatnot. Yeah, that's nice. Cool. Yeah, real, real sweet. Cool. Oh. All right. So lots, uh, of, bad, lots of badassery in here. Um, okay. So I've got, I've got a question. Rod Mills wants to know how much that small Japanese knife is. Uh, the small Japanese knife. Uh, I'm going to be honest. I've been trying to get a hold of that uh, maker, and uh, right now I have. Uh, I need to get about three twenty-five for that with the with the wrap. Okay. The wrap was an additional hundred bucks on top of the knife. Mm-hmm. The knife's okay. about the knife's two hundred dollars plus shipping from Japan. Oh, I see. Okay. And that's the only one you have from that Japanese maker at this point, right? I have I have two from that maker, and I have sent three emails to him, and I have not heard back. And he is seventy-five at this point, so Uh-oh. I'm really I'm really hoping we're okay. Uh-oh. Yeah. yeah. This is this is one of the things. It's heartbreaking to think about it on my end. Yeah. Because I'm one of the only guys that has anything like these. This is that knife again, if you want to see oh, it. Oh, yeah, the one's all polished up. Yeah. Yeah, this is a unbelievable knife. Now, you see, I was showing you knives that weren't so polished up. Like, that's a really polished one. Uh, but this one is, uh, you know, something like this is, I, I believe this is about... Oh, I'll, believe it or not, I like how this one looks. It looks yeah. This, this is unfinished. one of my this is one but of my favorites. Really cool. Favorites. Yeah. I'm gonna show you one of the coolest unfinished knives. I like unfinished knives, so I like when you see that black shell on it, because you know you don't have to worry about anything happening to it. You just beat the piss out of them, man. You know. 
So look at this. Look at this one. So this is where you can just see the the sh <laughs> where you just see it sharp. Yes, yeah, just the edge where it's sharp. Just yeah. the edge where it's sharp. Cool. Now look at that handle. This is called a coffin handle. That's like same, a, that's kind of like a mega Bowie. Same as my personal yeah. Bowie. This is the one I just pulled out of my pocket. Yeah. yeah. Something like this is about three hundred bucks. This is insane. This is a very well finished knife. Mm. With a coffin handle designed for my big ass hand. <laughs> so when you hold it, it indexes really fast. See what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. oh, okay. So okay. this knowing how the shape is of the handle, you don't have no loops or anything for your hand to fit into. This is how this is how shit used to be made. No one knows this stuff. Mike Bryan says the thick one that you had was insane. Yeah, this one? Yeah, you're getting a bunch of, uh, let me see, I'm guessing. I don't know if that was, uh, was it the other? Uh, maybe it's this one. Uh, so what what have you seen that you really like, Walter? I, I'm, I'm kind of a, a full tang, like working knife kind of guy. So uh, needs to have a maybe a quarter inch thick blade, you know, maybe six, eight, nine inches long. Um, yeah, we gotta. We have to get you over here, dude. There's 15 of those. Yeah, um, not yeah. Su not super purdy because if it's super purdy, you can't do a lot of work. With yeah, it, see so. now right. right behind you on the wall there in the middle. Let me see in the right just above where you've got the uh, the knuckles. See, there's a knife right there, right there. You just yeah that one with the silvery handle. It's got yeah, this thin, is no to your right. Right here. Oh, right here. Yeah. Let me yeah, see. This is yes. What is that? This is a bad motherfucker right here, dude. <laughs> That's a bad motherfucker. This is uh, integral. Your mouth. <laughs> this, is integ mouth. this is integral implements. Okay? This is the guy that makes it. He literally mm -hmm. kind of seems like Look a box. He sort of See, seems that like caught a my oh. That's oh. like teeth. I love that. That's awesome. Yeah, this is sick. Yeah. Now, what is See, this? This is called a what now? This is called the war horse. The war horse. Yeah. Yeah, this is two seventy five and it's a screaming deal. He normally sells it for three seventy five, but you see that little bit of wear right. from the from now, the sheet. are those teeth or bullet heads and these, <laughs> these are these are milled into it yeah, by hand. Yeah. Yeah. By hand. Is that just so you can get out more blood and sanguine? Mm -hmm. You know, the blood group isn't really for blood. It's actually no. so you can release air to get the knife out of a person after you stab them. Oh. Yeah. It's to actually create a uh, a suction. Yeah, release so the you, vacuum or whatever. Yes, yeah, so you can get the knife back out and reapply. So what would this blade needed. be considered? What would this blade be considered? This is a Tanto. It's a Tanto blade still. Okay, so and then what's but, but, the handle? But, uh, okay. That's steel. aluminum, isn't it? Yeah, aluminum. Aluminum. Yeah. Uh, aluminum. 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 Yeah, anyway. this guy makes... This guy makes some really interesting blades. No, that's nice. I like that. That one's caught my eye for a while while, while we've been talking here. And what like, kind of sheath was that? Like a Kydex sheet? Yeah. Or something? Kydex. Very, yeah. very well made Kydex. Yeah. Yep. I like uh, that a lot. Let me show like you something cool. Walter, this is your style right here. Uh oh. I'm going to show you what. Oh my God, I just fucking stepped on that goddamn Warhammer. Thank God I fucking didn't kill myself right there. Holy shit. Yeah, please don't do that on air. <laughs> oh, dude, I just lost all my toes. It'd be the greatest podcast ever, right? No, nope. no, not at all. <laughs> no, no, Harry Carey on the on the on live on. Dude, look, yeah. look at my table right here. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, knives. So what? Do this is this, on? This, you don't have any shoes on, huh? No, no. Oh, that's stupid. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is, look uh, at that bone. Walter would like yeah, this, I think. Yeah, yes. this is this is Walter style. Yeah, it's called the called the Mountain Man. It's tanged all the way down here in the no, middle. No, this is cool. Yeah, yeah, I like this. What do you yeah. think, Walter? No, it's all right. It's got, a, it's got a real good feel. We need to get you with a wooden handle, Walter. Yeah, well, kind of a. You want uh, full tank? Yeah, yeah. Um, I'd have to show you some of the stuff I have. Do you have something there to show, Walter? Um, here, I'll, here, I'll, I'll, I, I got something perfect for Walter. Hold on. Here we go. All right, Walter. Go ahead and pull out what you think is cool, Walter, so we can. Well, I, I've had this one out before, but it's this one's. It's not full tang. It's it's a right. This is actually a cheap one, but the blade idea is kind of what I like. You know, thick. You like, and, you, you like Bowie's? Not super long though. I mean, that's the. No, this isn't too big. This is about okay, about eight inches on the blade. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. See the hand. See the handle. Looks like a pistol. 
Oh yeah. Oh cool. Yeah, yeah. This is yeah. a kid that was 17 when he made this. Oh cool. He's 19, He's 20 now. I can't even buy his knives no more. <laughs> he's badass, dude. So what I'm does show, that? I'm gonna, I'm gonna that, show you what, all, all, all. Look at those are all his. Oh cool. Oh yeah, he is badass. I like that. So what? Like what are those going for? Uh, all different prices. Yeah, I like the kukri style blades too. Yeah, this is a badass kukri right here. I believe this is yeah. 220. Now, does he forge? Does he forge those blades, or does he just cut them? Cut them out of place. He's, oh, you'll love to see this. Uh, let me show you this. So he's buying. Uh, uh, he's buying regular steel now. So that's okay. a lot. Of, a lot of the reason his blades are a little more. But uh, but uh, these are made out of old tools. So Walter, you're gonna shit when you see this. <laughs> get this up back. Little. Let me get this up back up. All right, so this is a Tanto, small combat Tanto. Hmm. See the handle work on that? Yeah. yeah, yeah I mean, this is a 17-year-old when he made this. So he likes that style of handle. See that? All right, let me show you something real cool. Now, does that give you more leverage? Yeah, it's just uh, it, it feels like a gun grip. You see what it says on there, Walter? Let me see if I get can you read that? Hog? Oh, what's it? What's yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Bush hog. Ah. Bush hog. Okay. That's bush a bush hog, hog blade. Ah. Uh, uh, okay. That's an old bush hog blade. Oh, okay. Cool, cool, cool. Something cool. like this is like 75 bucks, bro. Oh, that's cheap. Yeah. 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 But that's because right now it's probably like 200 on the site. Right, right, right. right. <laughs> because it's two years ago. You know what I mean? Yeah. Right. There's a guy that... um. At, you see him every once in a while when I do gun. Uh, this is. A, let me just get this guy's name out real quick. He's so good. Is even it Liam? I, is it Liam? I, is it Liam Hoffman? Because someone's asking. No, this is okay. Anchor Forge. Okay. Anchor Forge. He's on uh, Instagram. He's real prolific. He. Uh, this is what he does full time. He 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 got straight out of high school and bought a uh, property and everything, a, a full on barn and everything to make knives in. He's badass. Oh, that's good. That's great. So the bone yeah. one that you were showing, um, right here. Talk about what that goes for. The bone, yeah. So I believe I, I believe this is uh, right at two hundred. Oh, for this like, bone, and like is that two, is that a real bone? Oh yeah, this is straight up. That's a, bone of what? Is it a beef bone? It's a leg bone. It's like a deer mm. or elk. I have some elk for I sure. Like that. You want me to show you some more bone knives? I got many. Yeah. Okay. Walter's going digging for stuff. Go on, Walter. Get some, get some stuff out. I'm just going to remind everyone to take this opportunity and click the thumbs up button, share, 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 share. And then also, if you go to Stomping You on Facebook, which I've put a link in the description, there's a link here in the Hangout. Uh, let me see if I can put it. I can throw the link up again. If you guys go there. And then put stomp. What was it? Stomp strong. Yeah, stomp strong. Stomp strong, and then uh, you know you'll run a chance. Uh, stomp is going to give away two T-shirts. So, uh, um, Archangel wants to know if you have any Bally songs. That is song. Uh, I I did. I had one from a really good maker named uh, Stray Cats, but I sold it. Okay. All right. So here's uh here's one of my coolest fighters. Uh. Just the, the way this is made is just so sick. This is an elk bone. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. And then we come down to a to a guard. Mm -hmm. And we have a, a Spanish notch. notch, Spanish notch to catch a blade. And this is another rasp. Ah, okay. And then it just comes down to a nasty bowie. Hmm. I mean, this is. I believe this is two fifteen. Oh. And it comes with a sheath like, uh, like the one with the wire. This is also designed to be carried, like I just showed you. This is a knob for your belt to hold it into your pants. Oh, I see. Okay. And the, and the knife will go in like this. So that knob stops it from going past your belt. Yes. It's a very, 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 very convenient way to carry a knife. You just take it out. Like you get in your car, you take it out. You just put it back, take it out, take it out, put it back. It's real, real simple. Hmm. Real simple. And nobody carries this way because nobody knows about it. Hmm. It's not advertised much. Right. Very cool. Yeah. Well, so that's another bone one. And then here's a. 
sort of a similar knife. Very pretty. I mean, just beautiful. Yeah, any definitely. any of any of these will be happy on any. I mean, just for decoration. I mean, for the money, it's unbelievable. Yeah, just built on a file. Very cool. Let me uh, take a second here. Let Walter's got some knives he wants to show. What do you want to show well, us, Walter? I, I picked this one up when we were out at um, out in Montana. Uh, actually, South Dakota at the um, not. Um, oh, what is the, the Indian, museum? The big Indian um, uh, reservation. No, um, crazy, uh, crazy horse. Crazy horse. Out of crazy, crazy horse. horse. Okay. They have, a lot of, they have a lot of vendors selling uh, stuff that they manufacture, and this uh, this is made from a uh, like a buzz saw blade. Okay. And it has a mule deer mule deer handle. Polished. Also, yeah. It's, it's actually designed to be like a, a working knife to do to cut meat with and stuff like that. So. Sure. Yeah. Sure. It, kind of a simple design. Older older gentleman makes them. You know. So oh, I that's badass. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. You have to be really careful out there. There's a lot of Damascus knives and a lot of like regular looking knives that are coming out of Pakistan and their heat treat is just so suspect. So really? in, in, in like my world, if you're seeing a pack a Damascus knife for like a hundred bucks, you know, or 50 bucks or yeah, 60 bucks, it just ain't Damascus. It's nothing you want to get your hands on. And uh, I have to be real careful of buyers because sometimes they'll be trying to pass stuff off. I've actually been burnt before and I sort of know what's going on. You know what I mean? So <laughs> I think if you're looking at a Damascus knife and it's, and it's not, you don't know the maker actually who made it. So like you want to see pictures of these guys, right? You want to see their equipment. You want to have right, a video right. video with them. You don't want people fronting like they're making knives and they're not really making them. And, and, <laughs> and, there's, and there's a lot of people doing that. And they're buying them from Pakistan. Yeah. yeah. And they'll Absolutely. make that. They'll make this knife for, they'll sell it from Pakistan for 15 bucks. <laughs> yeah, um, and, then, and then they bring it over here and sell it for two hundred and seventy-five. Oh man! And then you're like, "Whoa!" Yeah, yeah. What I guess? Yeah. Well, you uh, just don't even know because most yeah. dudes don't really use them up. You know what I mean? Right, right. Yeah. Uh, Meredith Mayhem says he just landed a pending Haas one seventy-five Anvil, twenty years old. That's about us. The original base and tooling for about a thousand bucks. Oh, that, that uh, seems like a, a pretty good deal right there. Mike Bryant wants to know if you missed the D-Guard Bowie. Oh, I got one. Okay. Yeah, man, this is sick. Yeah, you guys haven't seen the two biggest ones yet. I was waiting for the yeah, final. Okay. Yeah, so, yeah I mean, this, we're, this, we're, this, bear this, in mind that we're going until 9, and then I got to, you know, hit the gotta get out of here. But, yeah, let's definitely uh, let's take this a look. This is the D-Guard Bowie. Wow, ah, yeah. See how that. So is that a wood handle? Yeah, this is a burl, I believe. Really, really tough knife. Look so now, this, when they that, make a handle like that, is it solid burl all the way through, or just no? The, see how where it's pinned at the bottom. Okay. So Let's there's see. a there's a tang going through there, and then he just pins the handle onto that. But yeah, the tang almost, tang goes almost, down about here. It's almost saberish. It's very saberish. Yeah. The Bowie is based on a saber. Oh, I you see. Hear okay. I, I know the Bowie history, if you want to kind of hear it. Back in the day, in the, in the 1800s, in the French Quarter, everyone was in fencing school and saber school. There's a tree in New Orleans called the Dueling Tree, and there's like over 270 fights at that tree. That's how people used to solve shit, you know what I mean? So uh, fighting with the knives is a real, uh, real, uh, real, or, skill, or, skill, real yeah. skill back then. Yeah. This is, this is the monster of all monsters. <laughs> <laughs> The mother this is, of all monsters. This is Conan knife right here, boy. <laughs> it's like a dragon slayer. Yeah, this is really it, it, and it it will absolutely shave your hair, right? It's the sharpest knife I got yeah. in the shop is Exhale is in the building. Exhale says what's up. Uh, yeah. This is a badass knife right here. Yep. Very cool. Yep. Yeah. yeah, so let's uh let's recap everything here for folks who uh, you know because we're gonna we're gonna wrap this up a little bit here. We're we're basically talking to Stomping You Customs here in Florida. You uh basically what you what you do is you have different knives from about twenty five different artisans makers. Yes, right? sir. Yes, sir. And um, you're kind of like a uh, he's the front man. Yeah. Yeah. What what it is is I'm trying to bring custom knives to regular dudes. You know what I mean? So you have to have somebody talking about them. I have one video up on YouTube. I plan on making many more. And uh, and, and uh, once the website gets up, I can actually uh, 
um, you can actually see full descriptions and whatnot. Yeah. You know, I have I have seven to eight pictures of every knife up. You okay. know what I mean? There's a there's going to be a video conference with you when we sell a knife to you. There's okay. going to be there's going to be different things that it, I I, I want to make sure when something leaves my house, you're happy with it. Does that make sense? Right. Mike Bryan says he um, he wishes he can get his hands on that D guard saber. That's the star of the show for him. Uh, did we mention how much that was? Uh, I believe this is two twenty. Okay, no, no, not, it might be more, but up, yeah. up, we're we're in that neighborhood. Okay, cool. Very nice. Here, I'll lock it on you for a second so you can show that. And Exhale says he's been watching and working, yeah. getting the the uh, polymer eighty frames done. Oh, um, somebody's asking if there's going to be some rattler videos. So. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. So let's. So let's, I, um, just, uh, let's address that real quick, Walter. Let's show the rattler and tell folks what we're going to do here. I have to go to Knob Creek Machine Gun Shoot next week, so I have you to. Be, That's yeah, do you have to be driven by somebody, Walter? <laughs> yeah, me. Uh, <laughs> um, um, but, yeah, we go in the machine gun shoot, and then we come back from the shoot. There's going to be some video, and uh, this has got the SIG stock on it. Next time you see it, I'll bring it on. It'll have the uh, our our own stock on it, our MCX cool. stock, which is um, just as sexy as a Sig stock. But um, but um, at okay, any rate, I call, I call dibs on the Sig stock. Well, uh, right. no, it's I gonna. Call dibs. Yeah, you're funny. funny guy. Yeah. Um, um, but anyways, yeah, we'll do some videos. Yeah. I'm gonna get. I want to get. You can leave it. You can leave it with me. Uh, I'm going to the Iraq veteran thing tomorrow, and I'll be gone Saturday and Sunday. But you can leave it with me, and I'll uh, just ship it out to me. It's okay. I'll do some stuff. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm sure you <laughs> yeah. will. Walter's like, uh -huh. I, don't, I don't think so. I don't. Well, think so. I, I haven't even. I haven't even shot it yet. Come on. So let me ask you something. Yes, How's the trigger on that? Let's see. Ah, damn. Magazine hold open. Last shot hold open. You got That's a good that thing. Magazine. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's a so it's a so so trigger. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think we need to upgrade that trigger. It probably a little needs bit. a little uh, a little bit of uh, loving care. We need to upgrade that trigger a little bit. Would you put Would you put a bump stock on that trigger <laughs> on that gun <laughs> on the Rattler? What do you think about that? How about a slide fire, you know? Uh, well, what, yeah, negative, negative, <laughs> negative, negative. Um, sure, before, sure. I, before, I, before I do that, we go binary, so. Binary, yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll come up with some. You know, we'll, first, yeah, you know. yeah, actually, first what we'll do, probably we'll make plans. Walter will come over and uh, we'll, we'll do a video. We'll show that. And then, you know, because I'm sure Walter's got upgrades he wants to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're gonna put my stock on it, and then we'll. My my son says that I should make accessories for it, so we're gonna have to have a powwow on what what accessories need to be made for the rattler. Okay. Um, okay, cool. And then when I get back, also from the creek, we're gonna do some chronograph and some actual paper um, target testing of the short barrel guns too. Okay, if the nice. The yeah, everyone the, wants to get their hands. Yeah, everybody's, everybody's asking me about those, so we're gonna. Before I start um, letting people have them, I want to know what it does because people are going to ask a lot of questions. So. Yeah. A um, couple of things here. So um, Chris Bola says, awesome knives. Uh, um, Danimal219 says, I like the Forge and Fire Show on TV. It's not bad. Yep. Uh, Meredith yeah, that, wants to know if you're open to trades on anything in the personal collection <laughs> stuff. Uh, you know, possibly. Okay, possibly. Okay. Hey, let me throw uh, something at um, anybody else that likes knives and forging on Damascus. Alex Steele, on he's on okay. YouTube. Um, Alex Steele's in England, and he makes everything out of Damascus. So, and he makes his own Damascus too. So he's a that's awesome. He's a it's young kid. Bad. He's a young kid, and he's he's bouncing off the walls, and he's happy. And and you watch him, and you leave it, and you go, man, I feel good now. But anyway, that's Alex awesome. Steele, yeah. Alex Steele. So Rod Mill says Walter Walter for president. Uh, that could happen. Yeah. Yeah, Tor Meredith. May yeah, Meredith. May Meredith Mayhem says he hopes the binary stay legal. He doesn't have the Fostec yet. Uh, Big Daddy Guns does have the Fostec Echo triggers. I think they've got one of the Franklin Armory binary, or they've got a few of those. The the uh, binary from Franklin Armory, but they also have the Fostec Echo triggers. Big Daddy Guns. So okay, and um, they are also on Gunbroker. So they're one of the biggest sellers on Gunbroker. Yeah, you don't have to be here in Gainesville. You can go hit them up on Gunbroker. They've got them. 
So, um, yeah, definitely look forward to the stuff from Walter. We'll have more stuff. And um, all right, stop. You got a couple of minutes here to show us, you know, hit us with your best stuff here before we wrap this up. All right. Remember these from the movies? Oh, that's oh like my a... goodness. That looks like something from uh, Shades of Grey. Yeah, this is like, uh, you know, you know what are they, the Warriors or whatever back in the day, like Mafia. These have a spring in it, right? Fire mm -hmm. spring, handle on the back, and then this is shot. Oh. Okay, so this this is this is insane. <laughs> Hand, handmade. Mm. I like the purple wrap. I asked for purple. <laughs> All right, so uh, for for the ladies, uh, my maker was like, "Why do you want a mini one?" And I'm like, "Cause it's fucking badass." There you go. <laughs> this is ostrich skin. Oh, look at that. This there's this is a weighted tip. This is. And this and is and, for the ladies. And this goes on your keychain. Oh, there's, a, there's a spring in here, <laughs> so this is uh, this will break your jaw in a second. I mean, this is crazy, <laughs> and it's small. But if you want something cute, you know we have cute too. Uh, pink, you know. Monkey's fist. Uh -oh. monkey, monkey fist with Shokovsky crystals. <laughs> yeah, that's the kind of thing that uh, American gun chick would like right there. Yeah, there yeah. you go. Yep. We got this here. stuff. We got little ones. Um, let me show you. Mm. Let me show you one of my favorite makers named Michael Souther. And uh, this is one of the nicest knives I have. This is considered his uh, heavy Bowie. Look at this knife. Now that's that's not a real long blade. That's just a. It's a, it's about. Eight, not ten yeah. inches, maybe ten yeah, inches. Yeah. Both got thick it is. Yep, yep. Cool. Okay, so when I got this from him, the sheath was so pretty. I was like, dude, I can't even use this thing. <laughs> so I had to make another sheath for it. Let me show you what we did with that. So you know, a lot of the knife game is sheaths. Okay, so yep. you uh, you buy the knife, and then the sheath doesn't hold up to what the knife looks like. You know. And then some guys, some guys are like, I'm going to give you the best sheet you can ever even see. Look how thick this is. This is the sheath? <laughs> this is the sheath. Okay. This is velvet on the bottom. That's like a coffin. <laughs> okay, so, and then on top is Stingray. Skin. Oh, nice. Yeah. Oh, nice. I like Stingray. Yeah, I watched your... Uh, your your gun dude, we me and that dude need to talk. Oh, your your so leather guy. Yeah, Andrew's custom leather. Yeah, custom he's leather. yeah yeah he he's uh, right up my alley. So this is the nice sheath, right? And then I had one of those sheaths made that you tuck it. Oh okay. Uh, so so Walter, before I got my thin one, I was carrying this for <laughs> months. I never used it because because I wanted to see how well it carried. Right, right. So it has a show and a go a show and a go sheath. There's an attachment that makes a belt loop for this. So this would oh. be like your your go sheath, and this is the one you you, you bust out when you want to impress people. Mm. Very cool. Yeah, I so think have, I think this is to, tough to be honest with you, but I understand where well, you're coming from. It's it's very tough, but it's so pretty. You know, I just didn't want to. Uh, you know, this was this cost an extra forty bucks. Yeah, TJ okay. Blaze wants me to keep the show going extra long tonight. I cannot because, um, you know, I've got, like, one of the kids here waiting on me. <laughs> There's a bunch of stuff, the, and we did start early, so. Yeah, you guys went on without me. Yeah, yeah. That's all right. That's I know right. you were busy in the shop. I know you were busy yeah. in the shop. Let me show you. Uh, you guys ever seen uh, uh, Gangs of New York? Yeah. This is uh, – I've seen it once. I was going to look at it again. It's definitely worth watching. It's on Netflix now, I think. Or is it Amazon Prime? One of those. Let's see. It's on Netflix. I call this Bill for Bill the Butcher. Mm. It's just a sick night. Yeah, I like the lines. <laughs> Very cool. All right. So uh, one more time, just tell the folks how to get in touch with you if they're interested in all the stuff they've seen here. Obviously, we're, we're live now, but this show, will, it will stay up. You guys can look at it. <laughs> And um, you can get in touch with Stomp. So go ahead and tell them how to do that, Stomp. The best way to get a hold of me now is on uh, Facebook or Instagram. 
stomping you customs and um, leave me a message and I'll message you right back and uh, instantly give you my phone number and we can continue to talk. I will also uh, give you uh, access to the website if you're serious and you want to see knives up, uh, more pictures of knives, I can put you on before it's actually opened up and uh, let you see what's there if uh, anyone really wants to take a, a look at anything. Okay, very cool. And then don't forget to go to Stomping You Customs on Facebook and then put Stomp Strong on there in the comments. Like, make sure you like the page, put Stomp Strong in the comments. Stomp's going to give away two T-shirts, right, Stomp? Yeah, I got a, I got a boot T-shirt. It says Stomp Strong with a boot. Mm -hmm. It goes all the way across your chest. It's actually the size of my foot. I got this T-shirt, and I have a, a red logo T-shirt as well. Okay, very all, cool. All, all on black. Awesome. All right. So any last words before I'm, I got to wrap it up here. So any last um, words, things you want people to know? You know, I'd just like to uh, you know, say thank you to everybody and uh, a shout out to anyone I know that's supported me over the years. I mean, you can't do something like this without having support. Um, Absolutely. And, and uh, you know, just, uh, you know, just best wishes to everybody in this crazy time. I mean, keep your eyes up, right? Stomp strong. Uh, you never learn anything without getting up. So don't, uh, life's not so simple. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Walter? Just like 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 Stomp saying, you know, just uh, like I always say, be, uh, uh, be situ situationally aware, aware. You know, whenever you're out and you're just hanging out, you're walking through a parking lot, just take a look around, man. You never know when shit could hit the fan, you know. Eyes so, up, uh, eyes up. Oh, I'd also love to say uh, a, 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 a hello and a welcome to my uh, brothers at Stay Bladed. It's a club I'm in. I love you guys. Stay bladed. Okay, yeah, shout, shout out to those guys. Big, big stay, shout stay bladed out. shout out for sure. <laughs> shout out, shout out, shout yeah. out. But yeah, yeah, just uh, yeah. always be aware of your situation and don't take things for granted. Yeah, and, and uh, don't get too down with things going on because everything is cyclic in this planet. So things have a way of changing. So yeah, anyway. absolutely. I, I, I will echo these guys and agree with these guys. Stay and hey, and when you know what? Here. If you don't agree what's going on, let these people that are supposed to be represent you know. Um, you know, call them, write them a note, do something and be very, be nice, but be very to the point, yes. you know, and, and, you know, and if you're pissed off at the NRA, let the NRA know, don't bail out quite yet, but let them know that. Absolutely. You know, there's social media. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Because that's bullshit, you know, so. Yeah. There's um, social media. You can get in touch with them on social media. You can email yeah. them. You can send them letters, make your voice, let your and, voice and, be heard. And don't, and don't be like, you know, cussing and cursing and screaming and hollering. Just. Yeah, talk, talk like a human. So, right. you know, hopefully you got a lot of your aggression out just by us having this chat today. But yeah, I agree with Walter. Try to be respectful. I mean, you know, we're all having discussions here, but people who are going to give up our rights, we won't support them and we need to let them know that we won't support them. So, right, exactly. you know, um, yeah. I want to remind. I, go ahead, Walter. I don't go to Target. I don't do I don't go places where I don't agree with what they're doing. So, you know, I don't even listen to musicians that I don't agree with. So, yeah. You know. Absolutely. I totally agree with that. You know, if these people aren't going to support us, we've got to, you know, pull our support from them. Right. And that goes for the politicians as well as the organizations that say that they're fighting for our rights. Um, you know, but we, we should get mad. I don't think we should sit around waiting until it's too late to get mad. I think no, this is the no. time to get mad. Let your voice be heard. Um, I want to remind everyone we won't be here tomorrow. There's no show. We are going to the um, we're going to the Iraq veteran, the IB 8888 yeah. Nice. Hey, nice. I, I, at some point, I want to ask you what what does that all mean? I have no idea. Okay, well, you find out for yeah. me, all right? Okay, I've asked. Uh, who knows? Who the hell knows? Everyone just makes up their own meaning for it. It's just I'm pretty fun. sure. If I had to guess, one of the 88s would be when he was in the army. I have yep. no idea. It could be when uh, he was born, graduated one of the, high school. Maybe one of the units. Maybe one of the. Yeah. 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 Who knows? I know, he was, I know he was active at some point for sure. Yeah. So people yeah. make up their own things. I know they're good guys. We're going out to that. We'll be there tomorrow, Saturday. We'll be coming back Sunday. So we will be back on air on Monday. I want to thank everyone in the chat that's been hanging out with us. Um, I want to thank, uh, of course, I want to thank Stomp from Stomping You Customs for coming in and showing us. These awesome knives. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me, yeah. guys. Oh, and, uh, and, well. and anytime you want me back, I'm uh, more than willing to come for sure. Absolutely. We'll, okay. We will let you know. I also want to thank Walter Keller. Very welcome. Thanks, Walter, welcome. for coming in. You know. Real and, nice meeting uh, you, Walter. Oh, you're yeah. welcome. Yep, nice meeting you, too. Yeah. 
Yeah. Ron, remind everybody if you're going to Knob Creek, we're going. So, you know, we're getting ready for that next week. Yeah, so. absolutely. Stop by. Um, C18 in the pole barn. C18 in the pole barn. And yeah, there you Walter, go. Walter, call me when you want to do that 50. It's been a yeah. dream. Of mine. <laughs> <laughs> we, can, we can do something. Yeah. yeah. Like, <laughs> Enjoy your day off tomorrow, Walter. <laughs> day off? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Not here. Here. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Here you have a day off. Okay. And I want to thank all the sponsors, Walter Keller included, of Safety Harbor Firearm. I want to thank Rand CLP, Andrews Custom Leather, and of course, Big Daddy Guns. Big Daddy. Check them out. Big, Big Daddy. Daddy Guns right there. These guys uh, support the channel. I want to tell you guys if you like this I'm Pro Sh Choice t shirt, you can get this beautiful shirt right here from the folks at Forge from Freedom. It's in the Hank Strange collection, along with a bunch of other stuff, and we'll be putting out some new shirts and all that kind of stuff very soon. So there you go. Um, I want to, of course, give a big shout out to everyone that supports us, sponsors us on Patreon. We are Patreon slash Hank Strange. Thanks, guys. Remember what I always say, see this passum parabellum. If you seek peace, prepare for war. Hank Strange, peace out. Rock and roll. See you guys. Bye-bye.